kufikia na naelezea hali ya maisha ya kwamba haya maisha yako na mambo mawili katika ulimwengu kuishi na katika ulimwengu tunaoenda ama bingu tunazo zienda kuishi milele na kwa hivyo katika wakati ule alikuwa anachanganyikiwa na mambo mawili naona kuishi katika ulimwengu kwa ajili ya watu ambao walikuwa wameitiwa na Mungu akaweza kuambia sili za mbinguni ina manufaa zaidi lakini anasema hata kutoka katika huu mwili yani kumpa kuna faida zaidi kwake alafu unashindwa kwa nini alikuwa anasema mambo hayo yote ya kwamba kufa ni faida na tunafikiria hata leo i think kufa ni faida kwa kila mmoja wetu ni kwa sababu alikuwa anajua vizuri sana ya kwamba kama vile ambavyo tumeungwa katika maumbile ya ulimwengu basi ni lazima huu mwili utabaki katika ulimwengu kaweza kuvikwa mwili mpya wa kwenda kuishi pale mbinguni so he knew death was inevitable he knew that one time he will live he will die na kwa hivyo alijua ya kwamba atabandilishwa huu mwili akaweza kuishi na Kristo if you read in first corinthians 15:49-52 iko na hivyo kwa hivyo we shall all die and that is a truth that is a fact no matter how painful death is we shall all die as one say a day that we do not know at a time that we do not know a cause that we do not know about we shall all exist for this life because we do not believe uh, belong permanently in this life alijua ya kwamba atakipo kuna hukumu kama vile alivyosema katika Hebrews 9:27 that it is appointed that what one day a man shall die death faith judgment so death is inevitable so alijua kwamba kwa hivyo kuna hukumu and then alijua ya kwamba kwa hivyo na hukumu kuna reward ama punishment just like uh, Daniel said in 12 and first 2 that those who sleep in Christ Jesus those who are righteous wale walio mpendeza Mungu wakiwa katika ulimwengu the bible says ya kwamba wata watafufuliwa kupewa tanji ya uzima lakini the wicked in this life you know they just be raised up to be ashamed so may God help us so that well we live wakati tunapoendelea kuishi tujue kwamba we are not here permanently let us live well with one another let us also have a fellowship and a relationship with our maker because at the end of it all we shall all go to our maker my sister uh, Josephine has already gone to her, to her maker she did what she could in this life and now her work is over now where she has gone the bible tells me that hakuna kilio hakuna uchungu praise the lord hakuna kazi praise the lord ni kwa gundu mungu bwana asifiwe god good god is good and all the time si tumwabudu huyu mungu tumsifu yesu kristo amina kwa sababu ni mwema so where we are ending it's actually a very good place and we should all yearn to go to that particular place so we are here and your kid today is reminding us that we are not here permanently but one time we shall exist i don't know when i don't know which second i don't know which minute i don't know from this family where the next uh ten itakuwa mungu hamjui pengine mtawaita ni kwangu ni mimi nimeshafanya nini nishaenda so it's good to stay prepared it's good to stay alert tufikae tu kama vile ambavyo neno la mungu lasema kama wajinga ambao hawajipangi so may god help us as we proceed our request atakapo ni member of this family um my friend here at to conclude here na maombi and then after that we shall proceed on to bring the body but we akimaliza the last request for the manager to come here and tell us vile ambavyo tutaka vyotoka before we start bringing the body now viewing ila itakuwa ni kwamba we will be with all of us the family members will be last to view the body thank you thank you Uh, I'd like to say just one thing that as we do the viewing your key is not does not look the way we knew her in her pure self so we need to support one another uh, because it will be difficult to see her as she is now but when we lay her here on uh, little monday 
she looked just like she is. But uh, having been here for a few days, uh, she has changed. So she has darkened and has been not to be recognized her. So I'm only requesting that we hold each other, we become the strength of one another as we support one another. And um, the family, as we have been told, will be the last one. Uh, also let us uh, mount them and be there for, uh, for them. Let us pray. When we have no strength, our strength is in you. We see darkness in this bright morning because one that we loved, your key is no more. And we can hardly believe uh, that we lay her to rest back to dust where she was created. We pray from then on that you will be with the family. You will be the Kerago. You will be with the children and the family. If you leave us, Lord, where shall we go? If you are not on our side, to whom shall we turn to? We trust in you, even in this difficult circumstance, and we pray for your strength, for your guidance, and for your consolation. This we leave to you, helpless as we are. And we know that you will come to us, just as you have promised us life eternal. You also promise us strength in this life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sam, first from manager. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to see all of you here gathered to the Rabo and the people that have family. Uh, we are now on the final lap. We have been doing the preparations but now we want to do the last thing. We want to take Jockey to her final resting place. Uh, I can see the transport manager is working today to go to guide us how we shall move to Dorit Farm. If you want to go, I can proceed. Okay. It tells me that I know the route better. Uh, from here, after viewing, we shall load the casket to the house, and uh, then we shall have one vehicle that is ahead of the house that will guide us on the route. After the house, we shall have the family vehicle, the amount. We have three, four cars, and all of us we shall follow. We will go in a convoy, just in case we lose that. From the road, we shall turn right. We will go all the way to the Lanet tunnel. We shall turn and join Lanet. I think all our cars will be on hazard so that we don't lose them. Then we shall go up on the Arnett route all the way to the Dori Shopping Center. And the Dori Shopping Center is marked. We shall turn right and we shall drive another about 20 or so kilometers. We go to Tumaini Shopping Center. At Tumaini, we shall turn left towards Wakiongo. We do about 8 or 10 kilometers. Then again it's marked, we shall turn off kilometers to the farm. It is rather straightforward, there is not every jam. So once you follow the convoy, you shall not be lost. So we are going to start the viewing as Father has explained. Uh, we shall start with the other members of the family. We shall enter through this door. We shall exit through where the gentleman in green is. And then once you finish the viewing, kindly they walk to the car, we get into your vehicle and wait for the car to come. Uh, family will be the last and kindly help somebody around you should they need your help. Everyone now today you become an usher, you become a St. John and Dylan. Let us be one another to give us. The Lord bless you and hand over back to you, the priest. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so that is all we are going to do. So to all others, the friends, apart from family members, the friends we can start being the body. Karibu, tafadari. Kwaya, kwaya, kwaya.
in my mind this morning is that it's not just the perfect encapsulation of God's legacy. You were her, you were her to us. Um, and, oh my God, I love you so, so much. Who will lionize you today? That's what I'm going to do. love you and we're going to take care of your family. Our well, family is our family and we'll be just fine. So, we'll take us
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise be to God. I would like to commence our ceremony. Na tutakuwa na Reverend Catherine Karemi wakisaidiana na Pastor Andrew Mashina. Na ili tuele, tuweze kuelekezana vizuri nitatoa tu maelezo kidogo kisha tutaingia katika maombi alafu kuna wale watakaongea tutawaelekeza jinsi ambavyo tutawaita na ili tuweze kuendelea upande wangu wa left kule chini ni wa place for ladies across kule mbele yetu kule we are place for gents na hapa nyuma pia kuna mahali kuna urino for gents kwa hivyo tunaweza kusaidiana kwa njia hiyo so we are going to rise up for word of prayer kisha baadaye tukiimba bwana usemi yangu casket itatolewa kwa gari na kuwekwa mahali ambapo tutaendelea na ibada kwa hivyo tusimame nikimwalika reverend Catherine Karimi with an open prayer kindly thank you so much to simame kama unaweza simama god is good at all the times uh, that is his nature we thank god let us pray wachen tuombe mungu wetu uishie milele tuko mbele zako wakati huu kwa kimya tukiwa na shukrani nyingi katika mioni mwetu ni kwa sababu ya wema na fadhili zako kwa sababu ya upendo wako mwingi na mkuu juu ya maisha yetu kwa sababu ya kutuwezesha kuwemo wakati huu ili tukaweza kutenda kazi pamoja na wewe ni kwa sababu hii kazi wewe ndio ulianzisha na kwa hivyo twanyenyekea pako patakatifu masaa haya tukiwa na shukrani tukisema ya kwamba umungu wa miungu yote umungu anayeishi milele na milele umungu aliye mwanzo na mwisho umungu ambaye hakuumbwa na chochote lakini uliumba vitu vyote katika ulimwengu huu umungu ambaye anayetawala na kutamalaki vyote ambavyo ulivyo viumba tukushukuru mungu ni kwa sababu Umetukumbusha sisi wote ambao tuko katika kikao hiki kupitia kwa mwana wako Yesu Kristo ya kwamba itafika wakati ambapo tutatoka katika ulimwengu kwa njia ya kifo na hivyo ndivyo unatufunza masaha ya asubuhi. Tunakushukuru Mungu wetu ni kwa sababu upa moja nasi kwa sababu wewe ndio ulianzisha hii kazi na tunakuaminia kwamba Mungu wetu utaandamana nasi hadi mwisho wa hii kazi kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina lako. Sante Mungu ni kwa sababu ya kutupa neema za barabara wote ambao tumesafiri umekuwa mwema na mwaminifu umekuwa pamoja nasi neema na rehema zako zimekuwa juu yetu tutaki kusema ya kwamba ni kwa sababu tujua kuendesha magari vizuri sana lakini Mungu wetu umekuwa pamoja nasi pokea shukrani kutoka viridini vyetu vya mioni kwa sababu ya kutujali na kwa sababu ya kututenda mambo mema tutajiachili ya mikononi mwako wakati huu Tunapoanza ibanda hii yetu ya wakati huu ni kwamba roho wako mtakatifu atachukua nafasi yake kaendelea kujitukushusha katika kila jambo katika maombi katika sifa katika mambo yote akayafanya katika hii kitendo kupitia maisha ya ndada yetu ya kwamba utajijitukuza katika kila jambo kwa hivyo tujisalimisha mikononi mwako Mungu wetu tukiomba amani yako ikawa pamoja nasi Tukiomba ya kwamba Mungu wetu tunapoinua mioyo yetu kwako ya kwamba utapata nafasi ya kunena na mioyo yetu kutushauri, kutuvuta machozi na hata kutupa amani ambayo tuahitaji. Na kwa hivyo tujachilie mikononi mwako tukiomba you take over this service, you lead and guide us in everything that we are going to do. We trusted you before, we are trusting you now and we continue to trust you Lord and to, to, to uphold you God, the Lord you lead us in everything that we do. So Lord begin with us O oh God Continue with us until the end and all the glory shall come unto you. We pray this humbly through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. There will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread, bread forgiving and forgive us, us our sins, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We remain standing. Tutaendelea kusimama ili tukisema Bwana usehemu yangu wale ambao wanatusaidia upande ule waweze kuteremsha casket ikiwe kwa mali pake. Bwana usehemu yangu rafiki yangu wewe katika safari yangu nitatembea yana wewe pamoja 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 na wewe baba yangu pamoja na wewe katika safari yangu nitatembe Kutaka ili ni heshimiwe Naya naya ni kutema shaka Sawa sawa na wewe pamoja pamoja Tapungukiwa kitu Hunlaza kwenye majani mabihichi Hunongoza kwa maji matulivu Hakika Wema na zofadhili Sitani fuata mimi Nitaka, nitaka nyumba Ni mwabwana Siku zote za maisha yangu Kuzoteza maisha 
yangu Wongo yako na vimbo yako Vitani fariji mimi Waanda Choni pa watesi wangu Hakika we mana so fadili Sitani fuata mimi Nitaka, nitaka nyumba Bwana siku zote za maisha yangu hakika we mana so fadili sitani fuata mimi nitaka nitaka nyumbani mwa bwana siku zote za maisha yangu asanteni sana wale ambao wametusaidia katika kazi hiyo naomba wengine tusote tukae sasa you may be seated uh, tunaendelea na kazi ambayo iko mbele yetu na ili hatimaye tuweze kuikabili kanisa ituongoze katika ibada ya kuyasherekea maisha ya Josephine Joki kuna watu ambao tutaita waweze kuzungumza kwa kifupi na tutaomba kama tuko na local administration anaweza kuwa ni chifu ama naibu wake ama pia anaweza kuwa ni mwakilishi wodi ama kongozi mwingine yote ambayo yuko karibu ninawaita ili tujiandae na ili tuweze kuendelea kisha baadaye tutaingia katika mazungumzi ya kifupi sana being led by the family na kuna mzee DK ambaye tutaita aweze kuwakilisha familia na pia mzee waitito naye pia tunamwalika ili aweze kuwakilisha familia Uh, kutoka hapo kuna marafiki wa familia hii ya Fred uh, tutakuwa na watu ambao ni wa karibu na wakati huo ukifika tutawaelekeza tutakuwa na mtu ambaye anaitwa Nduati ataconfirm kama mwenzake amefika na pia Capital Market tutakuwa na Lucas Piano kisha tutakuwa na Sister Mary Paul halafu Kaplora School tunaomba pia tupate mwakilishi ambaye atazungumza kisha Ijaton University Community Dr. Mudoka tutamwalika halafu kama kutakuwa na swala lingine tutaelekeza na kwa hivyo if you have anybody representing the local administration tutaomba aje hapa ili tuweze kuendelea na program ya speeches Asante kwa sababu ya kuwakilisha uongozi wa maeneo haya kitukaribisha katika kikao hiki na ili tuweze kuendelea na species zingine karibu uh, God is good and all the time kwa majina kwa jina ni Rusi Nyangaru Moi na mimi ni area senior assistant chief wa area hii mwanzo nilete rabirabi zangu rafiki yangu sana bwana Kirago kwangu binafsi na familia yangu najua Mungu ametenda yale yaliona yafaa kwa hivyo najua tazidi kuwa nanyi e, pili kwa sababu ya wageni area hii kijiji tunakiita Mochemi sub location ni Wanjora location ni Matindiri E, division ni Gadanje in Gadanje sub county e, Nyandarwa county na wakaribisheni sana katika area hii e, 
sioni nikiwa na mengi kulingana na vile MC amesema ila ningependa kumwalika my senior who is the area chief wa area hii na yaweze kuleta ambirabi zake kwa familia hii kwa hivyo asante thank you asante sana god is good and all the time kwa majina ni John wa Motegi Maina I'm the area chief yangu tu ni machache first is to send my message of condolence to the family on my behalf my family and the local people to and the local people ni sema mahali tuko kama vile manda amesema tuko matindiri the location yangu na eneo la mbuge ni Oljorok sub county niangalie pale gani sub county ni mpya inaitwa Gazanje Nyadawa county tunawakaribisha wageni wetu kanisa wageni wetu familia tuwakaribisha hapa kwetu na wageni mkiangalia hii si area baya hmm? mtapendezwa na hapa na on your way back i wish you a safe journey na mkienda si yale mtaona masuri hata mtu akiona hapa kwetu vile iko ukitaka kuja to join you are welcome na yale mabaya mtaona msiende nayo hiyo tuachieni tu hapa asante sana god bless you asante uh, sana bwana john uh, kwa sababu ya kuzungumza kwa ufupi namna hiyo na tunaendelea vizuri na speeches zetu uh, wakati huu naomba familia ikiwakilishwa na mzee DK mahali alipo tutamkaribisha ili naye pia aweze kutuelekeza karibu sana mzee DK uh, asante sana kiongozi wa sherehe hii uh, langu ni kusema ni asante sana kwa ile kazi imefanywa nilikuwa na na huzunika kwa sababu tulikuwa na miji tatu tulikuwa na, na nyuki tulikuwa na Nairobi na tulikuwa na Njoro na hiyo kazi yote ilienda pamoja bila shida yote kwa niaba ya familia uh, ningetaka kusema asante sana kwa mchungaji wa kwetu njoro na wenzako uh, sisters wale wamekuja kuomboleza na sister Mombi kutoka mbali na karibu karibuni hapa kwetu hii ni makao mpya ya watoto wetu na ndio naona sasa ndio anaanza kujijenga kwa hivyo msiangalie huku na huku huku na huku hakuna nyumba hakuna nini ile iko tunatosheka hata hii ama ni nyumba kwa hivyo ningesema pole sana kwa familia ya dr Kiguza na kwa familia ya bwana Kiragu kwa ile mambo imefanyika kwa mji yenu na kama vile mnaonyeshwa kwa sign na sign language na wale wanasunguza hapa na wale wanasikia na masikio uh, ni huzuni kwa sababu uh, Josephine alikuwa on the her prime age lakini Mungu hachagui Ana, anachukua ile kitu mzuri vile mmesoma mmesoma eulogies uh, hadithi kwa vitabu na mkubaliane na sisi ati kama familia kweli roho zetu ziko chini sana Aa, lakini Mungu ataiponya pole pole ataiponya pole pole sitaki kuchukua muda mrefu kwa sababu mimi najua hali inaweza badilika wakati wowote na ningetaka kwanza hata kama iko mtu ya kurudisha shukrani ningetaka kurudisha shukrani kwa mchungaji Catherine vile amejitahidi kuwa na sisi tangu mwanzo wa hii maneno mpaka jana wakati tulikuwa kwa postmortem alikaa na sisi akatutuliza na maombi na tunafurahi sana kwa hivyo madam 
Asante sana. Na kwa hivyo machache you feel at home. We welcome you here kwa hii kazi kwa sababu ni kazi ya Mungu na kazi ya Mungu hakuna mtu anasema atenie ni mzuri kuliko mwingine. Mungu ndio yuko mbele kabisa. Asante sana. Asante sana dad for such a warm welcome na pia maneno ya kutuliwaza wakati ambapo tunaendelea kusherehekea maisha ya Josephine. Uh, we would like to welcome uh, mzee Waitito naye pia anene machache pia kiwakilisha familia. Mzee Waitito? Oh, Waitito yuko nyuma yangu. Ah, karibu sana. Karibu karibu. Thank you. Uh, God is good. And all the time. Bwana asifiwe familia na marafiki. Uh, mine is also very short. My name is uh, David Waitito. David Waitito is uh, married to Kiragu Zanti, who is uh, Dr. Gatuma's uh, sister. And of course, by extension, uh, I'm Kirago Zanko. And he likes calling me Anko. I don't know why he, he likes insisting on that. Eh? So mine is very short. Uh, I'll say, I'll talk about Kirago and Joki. Uh, Kirago has been a very close member of the family, the Kirago family. And by extension, we became very close to Joki. Personally, Joki introduced me to her sister and a few of her friends, and we also became very good friends. Everyone in the Kirago family will always remember Joki because any time we had an occasion, Joki is the one who used to be in charge of organizing for the foodstuffs and general management of any function that we had. I'm sure you all remember Joki's cakes. She was very good in baking cakes, and my family loved her cakes. And every time we had a function, Joki would be there. So we became friends. We entered into the same chama with Kirago because I'm not only his uncle, but I'm also his friend. We have a group of friends called Father's Vision, and I'm sure they are all here. I will not ask them to stand because we are many. And uh, we are close, a close-knit family of friends. So I would say that we will miss Joki a lot, but we shall stand with Kirago. I think he needs us most at this moment and even after this. And I'm sure God will guide us as to how we shall navigate the rest of the journey. What can I say? God had better plans, and that is his will, and we shall just accept his will. And can I say that he may rest in peace till we meet again. Thank you. Asante uh, sana, asante sana, uh, Bwana Waitito, kwa sababu ya maneno ambayo pia yanatia wengi moyo, hususan wakati huu. Now, we'd like to invite friends, ili nao pia waweze kutoa maneno ya kuliwaza kila moja wetu. Na kwa sababu ni watu wa karibu, Eh, kuna bwana anaitwa Omwenga Makori ajitayarishe eh, kisha kuna Karo Kimtai mahali alipo pia ajitayarishe ili tukifika wakati huo tuweze kuendelea then after that we're going to invite the Kapino Markets community eh, kisha baadaye tutafuata na sister Mary Paul kwa hivyo kama bwana Omwenga Makori kwa karibu tunamkaribisha hapa naye pia aweze kunena kwa kifupi karibu Uh, God is good, and all the time. Okay. Acha nwa fundishe salamoja. Mbiyamore. Nani ala hiko ala naifamo. Mbiyamore naende. Nasema mbiyamono. Iyo ni salamu kutoka maali naitua kisi. Uh, kwa majina mi naitua Omwenga Makori. Na ni Rafiki ya Fred. Na Rafiki ya Njoki. Uh, if it's not too much asking, I'd like to request the friends of Njoki just to stand up. Friends of Njoki and friend, and Fred, sorry. Musmame tu dakika moja. Pali muko. Smameni tu. Smameni. So, ndiao marafiki wa Njoki, marafiki wa Fred. I've known Fred for many years. 
I think it must be over 20 years now. And through Fred, I also got to meet other friends. Uh, through Fred, I got to know Njoki. My wife also got to know Njoki, uh, to know Njoki through Fred. So the circle continued growing and growing and growing. And uh, one thing I can say is that Njoki, as you all know her, is that she has been, she's generous and she's kind and, and, and loving. Especially friends and family. There's, there's a gap that you feel imewachwa. Na ombilangu leo ni kwamba mungu aeze kuwapa that comfort and that solace that can only uh, come from him. And that uh, as, as friends, let's put the family close to endele kwa karibu now. Even after we leave here, let's continue reaching out. Uh, let's keep in touch, uh, find out how Fred and the children are doing. Uh, so that this bond of friendship can also provide a pillar of strength. So, uh, Fred, your friends are here and we'll continue being with you. To the entire family of Kirago and uh, Dr. Kiguda, Poleni Sana from the friends of Fred and Joki. May God give you strength and may God give you solace. At times like this, we have questions that we can't answer, but God will provide answers in the fullness of time. Menjoki, rest in peace until we meet again. Asante Nisana. Thank you so much, Manamwenga. In the fullness of time, God will provide answers. Napia, the bond of friendship, Niviema, Iendele, Kama Jin Sambavio, Mnanaji, Ametuelekeza. Wakati hu, Ntamuliza, Karo, Kimtai, Kama Yuko Karibu. Karo, kindly. Thank you very much. Maneno Machache. Praise God. God is good. And all the time, even now, he's still a God and he's still on the throne. Um, I'll be doing something else, so I'll not give a speech on behalf of this group of girls. I will let one of the sisters do that on behalf of us and Joki. Um, Eunice? I'm Jambo Niwote. I'm Jambo Tena. Um, kwa majina naitwa Eunice Bonareri. Uh, I will say I will say something on behalf of these girls who are standing here. Uh, we are friends of Njoki and we come way back. Our friendship with Njoki started at the time when we we came as a group, a chama because our husbands were friends, so were close friends, so we formed a chama, and Joki was part of us, and we grew together as families, our children were young, and uh, we bonded closely, even as our children grew up, and our, our husbands, and together with all of us, we are still very tight, and we feel very sad to have lost Njoki, because Njoki is our age mate, so as mothers, we, we feel that we have lost a dear friend. And on behalf of this group, we just want to pass our condolences to the family and the children. Uh, Kirago, we, we are praying for you. Mombi and KK, we, is, we are together in prayer. Uh, and the children, we, we also we remember you in prayer and we'll be together with you even as you go through this difficult time. And Joki was a special friend. I think uh, other than remembering her for uh, the, the good skills she had, like uh, baking, and most of us have interacted with her uh, closely, we, we remember her as a cheerful person. She would bring us together. Even when we had small differences here and there, Joki would be that person who would say, you know what? Do not hold anything to heart. And uh, we have listened to all the good speeches that have been uh, presented here and before. And we just want to celebrate Njoki's life and pray that God will guide you uh, and will keep her wherever she is and will keep her memories close to us. Thank you. Uh, 
Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, friends of Joki and family, and especially for the support. And we pray, ya kwamba, tuendelea kusaidia na family ya hii, especially wakati huu ambapo, naendelea katika hali ambayo ikombele yetu. I uh, would like to ask uh, Lucas, kindly, Otieno, to come and speak on behalf of the capital markets. Lucas. And as he comes, uh, Sister Mary Paul, Ajita Arisha, and Dr. Waringe Mohende for the cousins. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. First, on behalf of the capital markets fraternity, in particular investment banking, because that's where we are the practitioners, most of us who have come here, we wish to convey our condolences to the Kiguta family and the Kirago family and to our friend, Fred Kirago and his family. I have known Fred for many years. Some time ago in 1999, myself and uh, Patrick Ndwati, Patrick, please stand up so we see you. We were part of the team that set up CFC Financial Services, the investment banking subsidiary of CFC Bank. I was tasked in choosing the team together with Patrick Ndwati and we came across a young man who was very smart and he was focused. Uh, this man was Fred Kirago and we took him as part of our team. He was an equity specialist. He quickly learned bonds. He was very enterprising. And since the investment fraternity is so small, most of us who practice in the investment banking industry know each other. So we all became close friends. And as you may have noticed, our wives were here just now. And they said that they formed even a charmer. So as friends, our wives also became friends. So last week when we received the news from Stancellas Kimani, we quickly organized to meet Fred, to convey condolences and also to be with him as part of us. We all knew Njoki, both people who practice in the investment industry and also by extension our wives also became very close to her. Whenever we had bad days at home, the cake was also always from Njoki. She's someone who we loved and will greatly miss her. So once again, Fred, accept our condolences. And as an industry, and I'm conveying on behalf of a practitioner, your colleagues, Pole, and we are with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucas, for your kind words and also being brief, even as we carry on with the rest of the speeches. Now, we'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Waringe, Wahende on behalf of the cousins, kindly, and then Sister Mary Paul will follow after that. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. God is good at all the time, and that is his nature. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the cousins, and I will request maybe they stand wherever they are, cousins to Kiragu and their wives. Yeah, we are many and I think, uh, thank you very much. On behalf of them, I wish to convey my sincere condolences to Dr. Kegoda's family and Kirago's family as well. Um, 
again, I would like to say that uh, we've grown together with Kirago from the time he was very small. Kujuokiwa saizi kidogo hivi. Yeah, and uh, we've grown together in Wetima Odaya, and um, Kirago has been very good, dedicated, focused. And uh, uh, Rita met uh, Jockey through Kirago. Through, and uh, we became very close. And Jockey had initiated a group that used to visit our cousins, and especially those that were in Nairobi where they used to visit uh, every home on circular basis. And of course, when this was done, uh, she was the one in charge of the recipe. Um, the news of her loss uh, has been devastating to, the, to us, especially. And I think uh, from uh, that time, I think uh, I'd like to mention that we've been uh, uh, working closely with a number of our friends from Kitengera, where Kilago uh, was operating from, from Joro, um, others from um, uh, Nairobi, and I know that we had also the their team, and the Nanyuki team. I don't know whether it's Nanyuki or Meru. I think specifically it's not Nanyuki, but uh, where the Kilago's home is in Meru, I would like to correct that impression that has been created is Nanyuki. Um, I don't have to say a lot. I think uh, other than thanking the teams that uh, we've been working very closely, we'd like to, uh, which uh, everyone uh, of us who is here, uh, to feel at home. And uh, we allow whatever happens uh, and we start living with it. And I would just like to say that um, let's uh, jockey lest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for representing cousins and the family and also for the kind words. Uh, wakati huu nitauliza Sister Mary Paul akaribie. Na pia ningeomba Ruth na Julia mahali wapo. Uh, watanipata pambele kuna jambo tafanya kidogo. So Sister Mary Paul. Oh, okay. Asante sister. Thank you. Bana sifiwe. Tumusifi Yesu Kristu. Kwa letu ajita go sister Meripo wama tu. I am an aunt of Joki. And uh, therefore uh, I'm here representing the whole of her uncles and aunts, the Wamatu's family. And we are quite a number of us here. And I'm also representing her other part of the family of, of in-laws because Mombi is her sister, a religious, and she has a whole family of religious who are here, the sisters who have come to present, to represent that kind of family where her sister Mombi belongs. I would say that Joki was a wonderful person was ready to wear many hats because we have heard she was able to integrate in the cousins on her side as well as the cousins on her other sides. She was ever there whenever there was a function, something that needed to be done. She was even the treasurer of that group at one time. So she was a person who gave herself and therefore was easy to love and, to, to love and she was loved. And for that, we shall miss her greatly. Joki was an ex-student of precious blood. So she, has, she was always felt at home, even whenever she came to the convent. You could, whenever she came, she was just at home. She came with her sons, and they could laugh and enjoy. And she brought us joy. So we appreciate her very much. And I want to assure the family, Kirago, and the family of Kiguda, there are so many people praying for you. So many, many sisters from America, the most precious blood community, and the missionaries of the most precious blood, and her many friends because Je Mobi, her sister, is well known in the world. She makes friends with anybody, anywhere. 
So in that way, she is very well connected and therefore connected with many, many people who are really praying every time and they're asking, how are we going? How are they managing? And we can say, by the grace of God, they will manage because God is great and he knows what he is doing. And he has plans for each one of us. And his plans, his plans are for prosperity, not disaster. So be encouraged knowing God is working with you. Thank you very much for this. Asante sana sana Sister Mary Paul kwa maneno mazuri na kwa sababu ya kutuelekeza kwa njia hiyo nzuri as we celebrate Jock his life. And taomba tusimame sasa dakika moja tu tusimame. Let us be upstanding tusimame tu ili ni mwalike Ruth atuongoze kwa pambio moja tukiendelea na speeches. Karibu Ruth. Eh hey, Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Eh hey, washa tumtukuze Mwenyezi Mungu ata kama in bad times we praise the name of the lord sha kutuma imisena piwa makofi jemeni na mfurahi sha kutuma imisena ila damu ya yesu sina wema wa kutosha dhambi zangu kusiosha kwa yesu kwa yesu Tumshangilie Yesu kwa makofi tunako poketi. Asanteni uh, sana tunaweza kukaa asanteni sana Ruth pamoja na Julia uh, katika hali ambayo umetuelekeza. Wakati huu nitauliza representative wa Kaplora School aje na Meshak mahali alipo kutoka Kitengela naye pia jitayarishe kisha baadaye tutapata Dr. Mudoka for the Egerton University community. Karibu karibu ili uweze kutoa rambira zako pia. Eh bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ya naitwa Joshua na Konyi na nimeokoka na nampenda Yesu na nashukuru kwa hapa 
na nimeona pasta wangu wako hapa eh, ya yeah. na ya yeah. tumejuana na na njoki kutoka kitambo before tujuane na yeye kama kaprora tulikuwa tunajuana yeye yeah, juu ya Keith sio nilipeleka Keith uh, right of passage kanisa ya Parklands Baptist na tuko na moto yenye tukua tunasema one for all all for one tutatembea na yeye hadi hadi tuende binguni na tena tukajua tukajua na na swa ju mimi mwalimu wake tuamfunza kaprora tulisikia hii kilio tukatuma mwalimu wetu mmoja tuko na yeye pale Mr Manari anaweza kusimama wave kidogo ya yeah, tulimtuma njoro ju tulikuwa tuko pamoja ju mama wetu moyo ametuacha alikuwa ako very involved kwa shule ya kaprora na alikuwa anapenda ku kwa activities zote za shule angechangia na pia kuweza ku advise watoto vizuri na alikuwa ni kama uh, a big pillar in our school na tutaweza ku tuta, tume lose a parent na a teacher a mentor in our school mwenye anaweza kuja aongeleshe watoto wetu na alikuwa pia rafiki kwa miaka mingi na tunawaambia pole kwa familia na tuko na nyinyi tunawaombea na tunasema asanti kwa kutupatia hii nafasi na swa na the siblings tuko pamoja in anything eh, walimu wako in support with you and uh, even uh, nimeona kanisa iko hapa na familia kubwa tunawapenda na tutawa support in everything na pia uh, anything mna need from us kama teachers tuko hapa tutatembea na ni asanteni sana great thank you thank you Joshua uh, mpigeni makofi ni sana naona tunataka kupikia makofi thank you very very much one for all all for one they have promised to work together uh, till the end uh, wakati huu sasa uh, tutaita uh, Egerton University Community Dr Mudoka tafadhali aje azungumze kwa niaba ya wao oh thank you thank you very much asanti Tumsifu Yesu Kristo. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, would like to bring our condolences especially from me and my family and also from the Department of Human Nutrition Egerton University and the wider Egerton University community. We got to know Njoki when she was a small girl because the mother, Lady Hilda, is the one who mentored us when we were in uh, university. And after that, even when we started our work, she was able to mentor us. Then, in the process, we got to know the family, the Kegoda's family, and we knew all the siblings, and we grew up in a way together with them, because Hilda was, had a big heart which opened up to everybody. Njoki, too, was the same. We got to also work with Njoki when she finished her bachelor's, and she came and we worked together with her for some time. And uh, uh, as a department, we really enjoyed the time we had her. I remember with the time when she was resigning, we were really asking her, Joki, are you really sure you want to go and resign? Because she was going to school and we were like, mm, you still can go to school but not resign. But because of the family, and this is for the Kerago, because of the family, she chose that she would resign and move to Nairobi. And um, that's part of one of her strengths. She was not a person who would procrastinate, very hardworking, and uh, a, papa, a person of purpose. If she had made up her mind, which she made very fast, uh, she was able you know, to move along to execute. And she had very swift hands that would do the work and complete it in good time. So as a department, we are going to miss her. And because we still continued with our relationship with her even when she finished Kabete, when she started her other work life. And uh, it is so sad that it was so sudden, but what do we say? We just thank God for the gift of life he gave to us. For both the families, the Kiragos families and the Kikudas family, God has good plans for you. 
and he will sure be a comfort to you despite the storm that we are going through now. We continue praying for you and we ask that his peace be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's appreciate Dr. Mudoka. Thank you very much. Meshak, wherever you are, kindly come. Uh, ili sasa tu kimaliza hapo, tamuliza Samburu, ajitayarisha, ili pato wale ambao watatuendeleza kutoka hapo. So we are trying to move a bit fast, sabu weather pia inapendeza. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ah, uh, kwangu naitwa Meshak. Nimeokoka Yesu Kristo ni Bwana. Ah, uh, niko mala hapa. Nikileta pole yangu. Na pole yetu kama wafanyikazi ambaye dada yetu amekuwa kama boss wetu. Uh, tukiwa kwa pale kitengela uh, ni jambo ambalo atukuliamini uh, maana amekuwa mbali lakini siku ya Jumamosi akapata nafasi kuja kututembelea tukiwa pale tuliona ni kama alikuja kutusalimia na kutuona ya mwisho. Uh, tukupokea ujumbe vyema lakini tunaamini ya kwamba kwa ajili ya baba yetu hapa na familia kwa jumla bwana atawatia nguvu. Bwana atasimama pamoja nao na hilo ndio maombi yetu. Tumekuja kama kama familia ya kitengela na tunaamini ya kwamba kila ambacho kinahitajika bwana atatualia familia na tunaombea Mungu awapate amani na Mungu awafariji amen asanteni uh, sana asante meshak makofi kwa yeye na pia makofi kwa wale wote ambao wamesimama hapa wakiwakilisha wengine wote na kwa sababu tumemaliza kile kipindi i'm going to ask some to come so that we can you lunge is joki tukimalizia karibu sana sam Sante sana bwana MC. Good morning everyone. I think once again I want to say welcome all of you for this uh, special occasion of bidding farewell to our dear sister. It is yet another day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. Amen. I want to call a team that is going to read the story of Jockey. We try to look at what we can do for this girl. And we realize the story of Joki is so huge. If we allowed everyone to come here and read a eulogy, it would take the whole day. And so what we decided, we decided to write a whole story about the life and the times of our sister. And uh, we want to call upon KK and the team that is joining KK to come. And we walk through the journey. We will finish one. When KK finish, the choir will sing one chorus. Then we will have another one and another one. We are going to be started by my brother, KK Karibu. Asante sana, Sam. Uh, friends, family, ladies and gentlemen, how are you today? Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I mean, <clears throat> the last week has been hard. Um, it was very sudden to see Njoki passing. And uh, I'm not going to lie, the last week was... Some mornings were really hard to wake up to. Um, but I was saying to Mobi today, and uh, when we were doing the viewing, I said to Njoki, today, today I woke up with joy in my heart and I work with a song in my heart because today was the day that we're going to celebrate Njoki and you know Njoki didn't celebrate herself Njoki was understated she just did her thing and um, she excelled and she walked away and so today is an opportunity to really recognize how the impact that she had in our lives and um, I will do it by reading through the um, this fantastic eulogy that was put together by Karonganga <clears throat> and so I will start Benjamin Franklin once wrote, well done is better than well said. This quote reminds us of Joki. She was a woman of few words, but her actions spoke volumes to all of us, leaving footprints of love and care in our hearts. What better way to celebrate and honor her than share as many memories as we can as we bid her farewell? How we wish all the memories would fit on this paper, but they can't, and therefore, 
we will safely keep the many beautiful memories imprinted in our hearts. Today we are gathered as Njoki's family and friends to celebrate the amazing gift of Njoki. Whether you knew her as a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother, a relative, a co-worker, a friend, a consumer of her many, many sweet confections, we all have benefited from her care, love, wisdom, and heartfelt advice. Njoki always knew how to focus on the bigger picture as opposed to the minute details of life. She lived her life in the sophistication of simplicity, honesty, kindness, and giving. Njoki was a loving daughter of Dr. Peter Karongo Kigoda and the late Professor Hilda Nyakonyo Kigoda. Our dad always referred to Njoki as short. Um, I guess that was when Njoki had a diminutive stature, but that ended at some point. Um, from a tender age, our parents always knew Njoki was special. And even from a young age, she was extremely dependable. It's from her dad's nickname that Njoki learned how to nickname things. She nicknamed her husband, Rags, um, and she also nicknamed all her children, animals, and plants. I, I'll admit I didn't know about the plants, but I guess she did. <laughs> Njoki attended the prestigious Precious Blood Secondary School Retreater, um, and her high school deskmate fondly recalls when Njoki and her were assigned the task of feeding rabbits. While she hated it, Njoki enjoyed it so much and even nicknamed the rabbit. Njoki was truly her father's daughter. Njoki was blessed with two siblings, Sister Mobi Kigwetha, and yours truly, Henry Karongo. We readily confess that Njoki was our father's pillar. She was always the first person with whom he shared his deepest wishes and desires. Whenever he wanted something communicated, he would share it with her, and always knowing it would get to the rest of us as intended. Njoki was the one we stayed with when mom would frequently travel for work and her education, and from an early age, dad had always known that he could depend on his daughter. In his later years, these years, she was the one who knew, uh, she was the one who knew when he needed to renew his car insurance, his cable television, and other, other, um, other expenses um, when they became due, seeing as Joki needed no reminders. When Joki became of age, Joki's father made it clear to his family that there would be no hustling of the in-laws when they came to fetch the bride, and neither would there be any delays, and which is what, uh, that is what exactly what, hap what, what happened, uh, and I'm sure much to the delight of Kirago. <laughs> the wedding hunter rights left home in record time. Joki loved her family so much and cared for each one of them. Her last hours of earth were spent with her, father, with her father in their home, evidence of how she truly cared for her father, as she did for everyone else. Uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6, says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Uh, Dr. Kegoda and our mother um, taught her and her siblings, us, the ways of God, and Joki was dedicated, baptized, and confirmed at Emmanuel ACK Church in Joro by Reverend Camiro. <clears throat> Njoki was our mother's firstborn, and thus the first one to develop a love of experimenting in the kitchen from her. This is something we now all share, siblings. Visit us and we'll feed you very well. Uh, she also learned how to swim from her at a very early age. Mom had to learn swimming as part of her undergraduate requirements during her time in the Philippines. Um, and Njoki's pragmatism, her eye for a good deal, her choice of what to study professionally can all be attributed to our mother. The family's transition to the new normal after our mother's death in 2002 was made much easier by the fact that Joki stepped into so many of her roles seamlessly and gracefully, ensuring that we were all taken care of. I'm now going to transition into Moby's tribute. Um, this is a, these are Moby's words. Um, if I undersell them, the fault is mine. So let's start here. Mm -hmm. Now read them in Moby's voice. Mm -hmm. Not her literal voice, <laughs> but from her perspective. Joki was not a naughty child. That honor rests solely with me. However, she was a tomboy. And throughout her life, she preferred trousers to dresses. 
She was truly an older sister through and through, even sending me money while in the university and at high school. She stood in for me many times as a mediator when I was, or I knew I was about to be, in trouble with my parents. Njoki was an excellent and dedicated swimmer. Being part of the swimming team in primary school meant early mornings at the pool before school, and then a mad dash at lunch to train for half an hour, eating lunch in a hurry, and then returning to school for afternoon classes. She taught me how to float on my back, and finally, I became an ardent swimmer. I can confidently swim at the deep end of the pool without any fear, courtesy of my dear sister. My sister loved to laugh and thought me incorrigible, a little crazy, and funny. The day I told Joki and Fred that I was going to join religious life and become a Catholic sister, my sister predicted that I wouldn't last more than a month before they kicked me out. I mean, you put paid to that one. <laughs> I was honored later the following year to be part of Joki's entourage of bridesmaids. I have never forgotten the tears in Kirago's eyes as he watched Njoki walk down the aisle. Njoki was my opposite in many ways. I loved fashion and she was most comfortable in jeans. She loved camping and in fact, her husband Kirago and her camped a lot as they dated. On the other hand, the only tent I've ever slept in was a tempted camp. She liked avocados and I loved them. But at the same time, we had a lot in common. Our love for cooking, good books, laughing deeply and loudly. We could be in a room and notice the same thing at the same time, lock eyes and start laughing. We could talk about anything. She embraced all my friends and I suspect quite a few favored her to me as she was infinitely more patient and gracious than I am. Another thing, Jockey loved sharing and taking pride of her family. We got updates on all their achievements in the family WhatsApp group when they successfully baked something on their own, a school and sports achievements, really everything. We also, also occasionally got pictures of Kirago looking snazzy, much as he is today, actually. <laughs> One of her strange habits was that she couldn't stand cooked tomatoes. If she saw them in her food, she would pick them out and line them up on the side of her plate. This is a habit that some of her children have inherited. And similarly, her children also have a dislike for avocados. Our sister's cooking was so good that her kids preferred carrying packed lunch to eating school lunch. Some of their friends incidentally did too, even sometimes trading their lunch money for a taste of her food. Njoki not only gifted us with herself totally and completely, but with her husband Kirago and her children Kyle, Sua, and Sevi who are sitting over there. There is no day I and myself, speaking for myself KK, editorializing a bit, ever found Jockey's house without mandazi or cake, which attests to just how much taking care of her family was paramount to her. One of the things that Jockey would lovingly complain about was the off-key happy birthday to you that was sung for each year by her boys, as she lovingly referred, <laughs> lovingly referred to them. Jockey's love for traveling and exploring new places came from our parents who took us around Kenya as we were growing up. I remember one Christmas a few years back when we drove to Amboseli, Njoki and her family could not get enough of the elephants, stopping to take numerous pictures, whereas I was the school of, seen one had, seen them all. She took numerous pictures that day, which I had to confess were amazing. Njoki could identify and name so many animals and plants, and particularly birds, both by their scientific and uh, regular names. She took a course at the University of Eastern Africa, Barton, which involved traveling to different parks around Kenya, camping, and studying flora and fauna, and she absolutely loved it all. The roughing it, the dirt, just all of it. Her love for animals has been transferred to her nephew, Sua, whose pastime currently is adopting various neighbors' cats and floriking with his Gukas dogs, which is all named, um, you know, I question the names a little bit, but they all will live with them. <laughs> Um, and finally, I'll come to my own tribute for Njoki, uh, which comments as such. Uh, so many memories come to mind um, when I think about growing up in Njoki. Cooking projects, not always successful, mind you. We've painted the kitchen red with all sorts of strange things sometimes when things go sideways. And this is, you know, a phenomenal baking career, not, career notwithstanding. Traveling with the family on holidays, many, many days of just being and watching the world go by her goofy sense of humor, Joki being her usual sensible self and making sure things were just so. And that I was four, where I was wed, I was fed, warm, safe, and happy. 
But for whatever reason, her passing has recently made me think of just how much she loved music, how much we, time we spent listening to music, and how much she shaped my own relationship with music. It's really hard to pick a point to start. Um, our household was always extremely musical. I don't know that we were all necessarily singers, but there was music playing in the house. Um, and if you were singing, you weren't singing particularly well. Um, it's, and, and it might have been mom's vinyl records. Um, I remember Jockey really liking the Anne Marie records. So things like Blessed Are the Believers and It's All I Can Do, um, which are some of mom's favorites. But also getting swept up in things like Cool and the Gang um, and you know, that sort of thing. And then there's the day you put on <laughs> that ABBA greatest, re greatest Hits record. <laughs> and I don't think you'd ever put it on before. And it's like you'd heard it for the first time. And that record played nonstop, <laughs> nonstop in the house. And it drove me absolutely crazy. The song's a classic, but man, it grated really, really hard on my ear in those years. <laughs> But then it's also Jockey teaching me how to dub songs on the radio because, you know, then it was KBC General Service and we were living in Joro and you really couldn't get anything else. And so that's the only way you could make songs on demand and make mixtapes, right? Then I figured out that you could press record without the radio playing and with a tape loaded and lo and behold, you could record your voice on the tape. And so I have this memory of making a tape um, with my best vocal impressions of TV theme songs. I'm not going to regale you with any of those right now because they're awful. And they were meant primarily for my entertainment and consumption. And I just don't know how Jockey and Bobby got this tape because the next thing I knew it was playing in the kitchen nonstop. They were laughing at me and I was going red in the cheeks. <laughs> it's stuck with me for so many years, but you know, it kind of is what it is getting hazed by your, by your siblings. But then it's Njoki going off to high school at PB and then coming home for the holidays and singing these songs that were apparently played in Nairobi and we just couldn't get them on GS. And it's things like Criss Cross and Heavy D and the Boys and Mariah Carey's Emotions album, the Make It Happen Emotions, all these fantastic songs. And these were things I learned about Jockey singing these songs in the house when she was home on holidays. It was kind of awesome. And then Boys to Men became a thing. And they were all she would talk about. There were posters in the house. End of the Road was playing endlessly. Anything that produced song, including, including Moby's and Jockey's voice, um, was part of that situation. Um, and then there's the other part uh, that not very many people know about, that uh, where I actually sang lead in a band for a couple of years when I was at graduate school. And on reflection, I think the misplaced courage that powered those adventures have their roots in Njoki's story. This has everything to do with Tevin Campbell's I'm Ready album. Because <laughs> Njoki loved that album, and she had a copy of it, and she sat one day diligently, I don't know where she got those lyrics, but she sat on full scout, wrote every single lyric to that record. One day I found them next to the radio, started playing it, saw the words, started singing along, and that is how I learned how to sing by ear. Um, just makes me so happy and delighted to recount, to recount these memories. Then she went to university, and then there would be these cardboard boxes which would come through with tapes, and that's when I had my first Marvin Gaye albums. That's when I had Joe for the first time. That's when I had, and I know this you know, goes either way, I had Kenny G for the first time, and I actually kind of liked it. And one of my fondest memories of Jockey, and this I'll read lit literally from the page, was how in 1996 Space Jam came out. And there was something about the mix of Michael Jordan and Looney Tunes cartoons that drove my 11-year-old brain absolutely crazy. And I remember just pestering Jockey to make me a copy of the soundtrack album when I learned she knew someone who had it at Barrington. And then just how ecstatic I was when, as she always did, Jockey delivered the goods. I still listen to those songs today. As I was writing this tribute, I was listening to that record. And I remember when I listened to that tape, she would always jump in and sing along with For You I Will by Monica. You listen to the song the whole way through and I think you might see why she might have enjoyed it so much. And I share a few lines here. Any times the times, any time the times get too tough and any time you best ain't enough, uh, I'll be the one to make it better. And I'll be there to protect you and see you through and I'll be there, and there's nothing I won't do. Godspeed, my dear sister. The universe is that much brighter for your having spent time with us. Thank you so much.
The choir seems to be far from the microphone, so we continue. Praise God. Bona sifiwe. Bona sifiwe tena. I'm a great career. I'm Kirago's first cousin, and I'm here to read uh, Kirago's message to his loving wife. And I read, my wife Njoki and I have enjoyed about 24 years of blissful friendship, among them 17 years of marriage. It has been effortless to love and be loved by Njoki since that Sunday afternoon in 1999 when I first saw her at Njoro Country Club. On that Sunday, I had gone to see my dad, who had come for a tournament. There was a group of girls serving the guests, but don't ask me who the rest were. My eyes had spotted a girl who seemed to know what she was doing as she catered, served with a smile, laughing with the guests, and I could not resist but admire her, and not to mention her well-calculated walking style. <laughs> yeah, that attracted Kirago Tinjoki. At that moment, I was, a young, I was young and kinda shy to have initiated a conversation, but as fate had it, the following week, in an afternoon, I went for swimming at the Ageton University swimming pool, where again, I met Njoki. This time, I gathered all the courage, you can imagine gathering all the courage, eh? <laughs> and had an effortless conversation with this wonderful girl who had caught my eye earlier. On this day, I noted her beautiful skin and wisdom. I also learned that she was attending the university chapel and was a member of the Egerton Christian Youth. Our conversation that day opened doors to a friendship that will turn out, to, turn out so great and unforgettable. On Sundays, I could walk her home as she lived with her parents nearby. A day that I cannot, that cannot go without mention was when she requested our common friend, Ben Ngani, to accompany me to their home and we were treated to a continental dinner prepared by none other than Njoki. Slowly, this girl stole my heart bit by bit. She could visit her hostels and she never missed the university games. She was always on the side cheering me as I played handball and I can't tell how, but when she cheered, we will end up winning. <laughs> Just seeing her there made me a superhuman. <laughs> Her generosity has stood the test of time from the day I met her until she took her last breath. Did I mention that I got constant supply of yogurt in the year 1999? Yes, she will bring me some yogurt to the hostel. I clearly remember one day I got to my room after classes and was told by Simon Oyer that a lady who had a car left some yogurt for me. From that day, Simon squeezed himself in our friendship and, <laughs> and he could feast on the yogurt with me as if he was part of the friendship. <laughs> Simon, <laughs> these small acts of kindness have been a mark in my marriage to Njoki. Yes, the friendship grew into a marriage that I will live to celebrate. Let me go back to when I knew I'd marry Njoki. In 2000, we lost touch as she had finished her studies at the Baraton University and I was working at the Nero and was working at the Nairobi Hospice while I was at teaching practice in Yahururu. But I won't say I never thought about her. I sure did. I think I'm witness to this because Kirago was staying at our place, and that's how I also got to know Njoki. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, in 2001, while Njoki worked at the Nairobi Hospice, Nairobi Hospice, we met in Nairobi. At that time, her mother was unwell. Later that year, in October, her mother rested and was laid to rest. I decided to go condole with the family. Njoki offered to pick me in Nakuru. At, this, at that point in time, I was, just a visiting, I was just visiting a dear friend after she had lost her mom, whom I knew. However, on that special day, as I watched her come towards me with her unforgettable smile, having offered to pick me from Nakuru town, I saw the woman I had never seen. It was at that moment that I knew she was the woman I wanted to marry. 
and I pursued her with an intention to marry her. On 19th August 2006 at St. Austin School, Nairobi, after we both agreed to be with each other in good and bad times, I watched her walk down the aisle and, and was declared my wife by, before God and man. Our marriage life has been one to remember. Our friendship has been special to the time she took her last breath. She has been so caring, loving, and respect, respectful, not just to our three boys, Kyle Karongo, Svi uh, Gatuma, and Suwa Renge, but, and I, but to everybody within her reach. I have watched and admired how Njoki deeply cared about people. Can you imagine, just last month, she bought me some sunscreen, but I was reluctant to use it, and I, and I insisted that my skin had no issues. She called me from Nakuru every morning to remind me to apply the sunscreen. So even though today is not as sunny, I chose to apply the sunscreen. Uh, this was us, and we had no major fights, but we disagreed often, and after a few hours, we'd just make up and laugh at ourselves or at each other. My wife, Njoki, was a peace lover, so the few days we had disagreements, she chose to give me some silent treatments. For a few hours, if not minutes, she'd end up talking to me with laughter. This made it so hard for anyone to find a reason to annoy her, but on the rare occasions that she was angry and frustrated, she'd resolved to a thorough house cleaning. This is the wife I will hold uh, hold, I will forever hold dear in my heart, the girl who touched the world with her little acts of kindness and care, like, her, like packing a number of well-pressed handkerchiefs for me each time I traveled because she knew I had, I easily got episodes of sneezing. The mother who took the, the decision to homeschool our boys wholeheartedly, did everything that was needed, was committed to see them perform well and enjoyed it, while at it. I had no reason to worry about the boy's education because she was on top of it. A caring mother whose kitchen was the center of her world. It was in her kitchen that she prepared countless meals for us, our family and friends, and served with a smile. A woman who could feed four boys without fail is a heroine. I knew a friend who cared deeply for all those around her a frequent blood donor, and a volunteer in so many charitable organizations. Njoki was indeed a special soul that God honored me to call my wife for 16 years, 11 months, and 26 days. For sure, Njoki leaves behind a legacy bigger than her name. And now I'll read what uh, the boys have written. Njoki, Njoki's wonderful sons, Kyle Karongo, Sivi Agatuma, and Suwa Warengi have lots of memories imprinted that cannot be put in many words as of now. All they can say at this very difficult time is, Dear Mom, you are an example of a perfect mother. You are kind, loving, strong, and genuine. You were amazing at all you did. Words fail to express how much we miss you already. The world changes from year to year, our lives from day to day, but the love and memory of you shall never pass away. Continue resting in peace. Continue to rest peacefully. So let's jump out the, those two pages. And, I'll, and let's go to daughter-in-law to remember. These are the words of Njoki's mom-in-law. Since the day Kirago introduced Njoki to us, she instantly became family. Njoki remains a special daughter who has shown compassion, love, progressive mindset, strength, and maturity the years she has been a daughter to me. A case in point is some time when I was very ill and in need of special attention. Njoki took care of me, never missed the hospital appointments, and later took me into her house until the day I got better. 
She has been a close friend to me, let alone being a daughter. I will surely miss Njoki. And now to what um, Saira Orenge wrote. Um, a sister-in-law to remember. Remember, back in 2003, my mom told me to straighten up Vitamba in the living room because my brother was bringing home a visitor. I remember how fascinated I was that Fred will bring home a girl. My fascination and excitement was overwhelming that I was unable to talk to her when they arrived. Knowing I didn't have much going on my side, I couldn't let my brother down. I set out to impress her with my incredible pepeta skills. Let me tell you, I pepetered and straightened the vitambas even after they had arrived. Seeing my effort, she smiled, took a photo of me, then brought me a cup of something that looked like uji. Bullseye. I knew she liked me. <laughs> well, they did not need to convince me otherwise. Thinking back, I think I sold, I sold myself cheap for three liters of strawberry yogurt. <laughs> yes, the thing that looked like uji was yogurt. This was the beginning of a new relationship with my big sister and sometimes a mother, a strict one at that. Njoki took care of me like her own son. I enjoyed some of the best food to the point that in high school, I had guys who would wait for me after visiting just to taste the chapuz. In Njoki, I found a friend, a sister, and a mother. She taught me as much, she taught me so much and has been grateful to me a simple woman in her own ways. The gap that she left in our lives is too big to imagine. The get-togethers, birthdays, the games, the stories, the plants, as well as recipes we always shared. I will miss the long conversations, the lost bets, and the solicited food favors. It's painful to think that you're gone physically, but you will forever be in our hearts. May she rest in peace. Praise God. I'm back again. My name is Caroline Kimutai. I read on behalf of the classmates 1990, 1994 onwards, and on behalf of the friends. Schoolmates, Kilimo Primary School, class of 1990. Joki was a, our classmate for all our primary schooling. Later on in college, we were neighbors for a while when her mom, who was a professor, and her mom was a professor at Egerton. We attended each other birthday parties, which were a big deal when we were young. Parties were a big thing with the Kigozas, and there would be for the Christmas, aka Joki's dad, Dr. Kiguda, who was very generous at hosting children for parties. That I have heard from my cousins, the Goyos. The Kigozas in our time were cool kids because they had these bikes. They would ride around campus. It was a late mom. Professor Kiguda and Joki and Mombi who rode these bikes almost every day. The Kigodas were generally known for their humility. Joki's mom was one of the first women professors we had in Kenya, but Joki was quite humble and this made her just a magnet. Joki's Kilimo primary schoolmate, schoolmates describe her as follows. Joki was quiet, polite and a people's person because she was easy to get along with. She was not noisy and you wouldn't hear her shout even when, her, when she was playing in the field. She was brilliant in school because she was always among the top students in our class. She made friends who stuck with her until her adulthood. We now move to Joki's Precious Blood class of 1994 classmates and they describe her as follows. I remember Joki was a late joiner and I was in awe of her height. She never spoke much, but would smile lots with everyone. That's what everyone is saying, I'm sure. The only duty I did with her for about one term was feeding rabbits, and she seemed to be enjoying it, so most of the time I would stick, sit back telling stories as she fed the rabbits. I'm not surprised she took up to farming passionately. She actually gave the rabbits names, which I can't even remember. But who does that? Of course, Joki did. 
I just enjoyed being the duty partner with minimal effort because she could do it all and I would love it while she was at it. Jockey was my deskie in high school. We also played hockey together. She radiated a warm, sweet, calm nature, but I'm sure the hockey ball would disagree with this. In class, I counted on her for cover, especially in those double lessons when the eyelids became too heavy. You know that toothpick moment? Yeah, she would nudge me just at the right time. After high school on our first semester at Egerton University in Joro, we had a horrible madaman one evening, which later on turned tragic. Helen, my ex-PB comrade, and I were new to the area, but we knew Jockey lived in Joro. We found our house in the dark, and her family provided us with great, such great hospitality. The next morning, her mom, a prophet, Ejaton, gave us instructions not to leave until she surveyed the situation. We left eventually, but here was my desk once again looking out for me. At this difficult time, I said to her dear family, Kiravi and the boys, may God grant you peace and comfort. Josephine was an exceptional individual who graduated from PB as part of the class of 1994, standing out among a group of brilliant and spirited young ladies. Her gentle yet lively nature made, her lasting, made a lasting impact on us, combining serenity, kindness, and cheerfulness. The tribute from those close to her only reinforced our memories of her as a confident yet humble classmate, always wearing a smile and demonstrating maturity and dependability in everything she did. Among the many stories of high school drama, not one of the 66 tales we could share today portrays her as anything other than an admirable person who was always positive about life, never allowing her challenges to break her, but always remaining positive and easy to be with. At Baraton University, she was quite just as narrated by her primary and high school mates. She was a regular in church and was a member of a group called Mary. Anyone who got to interact with her would happily tell you that she loved her family. You could see the love flowing in the family. I remember our days at Egerton Chapel. I especially remember how she gelled in as well. As a college mate yet, she was in Baraton and not many of, knew, many of them knew that she was actually not in Egerton. She naturally fitted very well. She also was very generous to the level of doing full continental breakfasts, lunches, and dinners for many of us at her parents' house. She was also soft-spoken, not controversial, very loving, God-fearing, and very humble. Joki studied at teaching nursery school between 1980 and 1982, Kilimo Primary School, and these both were located at Egerton University. Then she moved to Precious Blood Secondary School, Reluta, between 1991 and 1994. She then joined Baraton University in 1995, where she graduated with a master's degree in nutrition and a minor in biology in 1999. And later she joined University of Nairobi Kabete Campus for a master's degree in nutrition. Jockey remained very compassionate in her adulthood. This led her to work at the Nairobi Hospice for a while before joining Injerton University in 2002 as a teaching assistant in the Department of Food, Nutrition and Dietics. She has also been very active in blood donation drives through the virtual or negative blood donors. For a while, she worked with AMREF. She had been an entrepreneur baker, TFI Treats KA, a car wash owner, a farmer and has been running quite a number of businesses. Her entrepreneurial spirit was at another level. A dear friend confesses how she bumped into her at near Stanbic Bank where her husband worked and she proudly told her that she runs a nearby car wash. She was the best at it because she would go the extra mile in customer service. Jockey would ensure a clean wash and in case any clients delayed to pick up, she would send the car over to the office and drop the keys great service provider. Jockey joined the Health Sister Foundation in 2014 as a volunteer and played a major role in helping come up with the best diet for cancer patients. She played a major role in the Kiss Cervical Cancer Goodbye campaign, Avia Harvest and uh, the Birth of Regenerating Nations Beam. Until her demise, she was a consultant nutritionist at both Sister 
Foundation and, reju and Rejuvenating Nature's Beam. She has been a main source in helping the teams research and document how to use natural resources to prevent and manage diseases. She served diligently, gave her time and resources in both organizations. We shall surely miss you, Joki. I will read the final summation. It's hard to sum up Joki's life's achievements today, but for all the years to come, we will live to celebrate this special soul. We feel that we have not even scratched the service, but we are happy to happy and sincerely thankful to God for the healthy 46 years, 10 months and 9 days that we had the privilege of having Joki as part of our lives. What can we borrow from Joki? Her mantra, live, love, love and let go. Joki, ours is to accept God's will. We've heard that up there, there are streets made of gold and that when you get there after a life well lived down here, these are hard to hold you. Now that your days down here are through and you lived standing up for those down on their knees, you lent a voice to those who could not speak, you shone a little light and gave sight to the ones who had lost their way. You wore your heart on the sleeve and were there for us, your family, friends and strangers. We believe your hand is well held. Ours is to let you rest. We are thankful to God for honoring us again with your life. Eternal grant unto you, Joki, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May Joki rest in peace. May we all say, Amen. Uh -huh. Let's clap for all those people who have done a good job of eulogizing Joki in such a great way. Uh, wakati huu sasa tutaingia katika ibada tukiongozwa na kanisa kwa hivyo tutasimama sote we sing great is thy faithfulness kisha sasa tuendelee na ibada hiyo nyingine tusimame tunaomba then you see it's in the program kwa program kuna great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning within. The changes not the combustions I feel not. As always, be the full. Morning by morning, new masses I sing. All I have made in thy hands has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me.
going to sit down and I'll request, uh, I'll request the people that are taking the readings, that is Irene and uh, Mombi, to come forward so that they take us through the readings for the day. Our reading today is from Psalms 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade. On the right hand, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The word of the Lord. Speak to God. A reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. Thank you so much. We'll all rise up so that we welcome Pastor Andrew for the word of God. Andrew Sing Kumtegemea Mukozi. I hope we all have the hymns. I hope we all have Kumtegemea Mukozi so that we sing uh, the hymn. Kum 
Indeed, Almighty Father, you are righteous, and indeed, your promises are yes and amen. And as we are gathered in this place, in this Gadanje location, Amba Father, we are submitting ourselves unto you. We are raising an altar and dedicating that, Father, as even as we carry on in this service, oh dear Lord, even as I prepare to share your word this very afternoon, our Father, that it will be nourishing your people's spirit, it will encourage those who are discouraged, it will comfort this family, Almighty Father. And indeed, it will be a word that will not only for today, but even the days ahead of the walking of King. Therefore, I invite your presence, your Holy Spirit to guide and lead as I converse with your people. May your word bring light, may it bring understanding to the simple as your word dictates to our Father. We worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we have our seats. Natuketishini. Asante Nisana, let's appreciate our MC for guiding us very well. Uh, family, my dear friend Fred, receive my condolences from my family. Uh, my wife, Mo, uh, Wairimu, I told her I'm coming this way, and she sent me with my co uh, condolences to you. And to the boys, Kyle, Suv, and Sue, receive my condolences this very afternoon, and dad as well. We have been praying since this day came, and the, the news came, uh, and it was hard for us as well. My name is Pastor Andrew Mashina from Parkers Baptist Church in Nairobi, where Fred and the family uh, fellowship, and we have been working together. And therefore, as I start here, also my heart is bleeding. But God whom we serve, we continue encouraging us and giving us the understanding that we need. In Isaiah 57, verse 1 and 2, 
the word reminds us that the righteous perish and they die and they rest in peace. But those who are left behind, they don't get understanding. My prayer this afternoon, that even as we go through the word of God, we live here encouraged and having an understanding than we had when we came here. Amen? And therefore, uh, also from my seniors, Reverend Ambrose and Reverend Simon, receive, uh, they know that we are here, receive our condolences from them as well. And I know I came from with uh, some of people from Parkras Baptist Church. If you are here from Parkras Baptist Church, kindly I request you start. What were Paki? Yes, I see you, Steve, Naomi, anyone else? Those who fellowship at Paki. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and Naomi is yes, Joshua, uh, teacher for the, for the boys. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, may I also recognize the clergy? I know I am the Reverend Catherine, who has been a strong pillar to the family since the happening in Joro. Any other clergy? Pastor, Father, I know we have Father Moses, and he will be coming to introduce the team. Maybe, yes, come over, Kaidre. Kaidre, come over. You say hello to the team. Father Kaidre, yes, please, Kaidre. And I know Sister Mumbi, uh, you have a, a, a team that is, uh, you came with along. Yeah, Kaidre, they can start to recognize them and appreciate them. Mumbi, come, you introduce your team. Let's start with Mumbi, then Kalisto. So, Catholic sisters exist in many different congregations. I think I had in Kenya there are 200 and something. Globally, they're in the thousands. So I have many sister friends I've made over the years, and different congregations are represented here. I have the sisters of St. Joseph of Mombasa. Can they please stand? <laughs> then I have the missionary sisters of the precious blood, where my own vocation was cultivated for many years. I have the sisters of mercy, I have a sister of Emmanuel, Sister Lina. Have I forgotten anyone? Oh, and yes, a Lark sister. And I made friends with her recently, and she has become a very close friend of mine. And myself, I'm a sister of the Precious Blood from Ohio, and my own sisters, even though it's the middle of the night, are watching the live stream in support. Thank you. Thank you, Mombi. Let's appreciate Mombi and the team that is the sister with the talking hearts. It's a great ministry. Thank you so much for studying in the government. Let's appreciate her, the talking hearts. <laughs> Father Kalisto. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, my name is Father Kalisto Nyagilo. I come from the Archdiocese of Nairobi. I've known uh, Sister Mombi for quite some time. And uh, indeed, she took me to uh, Njoki's place, and I met uh, uh, the, the young guys who are here. I remember, I don't know whether it's one of them called me a weird person when I went there. <laughs> don't know who it was. But uh, they were lovely, and I've met also Fred. And... Uh, Indeed, the song of Joki has just come uh, to an end. Our songs, our symphony, our melody, uh, as much as we would like to sing them, yes, we sing them, but they don't end. The stanza, uh, it's only God who knows. But I know Joki is singing with the angels in heaven. May she rest in peace. Eternal rest grant Joki, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon May she rest in peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's appreciate Father Caristo. Uh, Father Moses, you need to say something? God is good and all the time. My name is Moses Karanja. I live and work here. I work with the Kenya Defense Forces as a chaplain in the National Defense University, Kenya. Um... Earlier on, I was introduced as family. That is contested. Um, Mombi calls me cousin because my dad and uh, his father, Dr. Karongo, 
their age mates and they were brought up in the same village. We later on got to know uh, this when we visited my father and I visited uh, her home and the father uh, asked me questions and when I answered, we, we knew that they were childhood friends. But Njoki always called me Muda. I don't know why she called me that name. But Joki was special. I remember the first time that I met her, she asked me a question I never knew what it was about. She asked me, what is your blood group? You know, you never ask people what your blood group is. <laughs> and I looked at Mombi and I said, you have a weird sister. <laughs> but later on, I discovered that she was a, a rare blood group. She was O negative. And in my military ID, I had O negative uh, 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 blood group, but I am O positive. But I remember when I, I worked in a hospital for eight years, I worked in Memorial Defense Mem Memorial Hospital, I would always call Joki whenever I had a patient, because that area, I always took care of patients, and I will tell her there is someone who needs your blood. And she would tell me, leave it to me. Such a special person. Now, the last time that I met Joki in person, they had come to visit me in Lanet, where I live. I live in the parish section 58, St. Monica section 58. And they had come with other visitors. And Joki um, uh, went to the place of convenience. And I, she must have peered and saw that there was a water heater that was not well done. And she came and told me, Mother, do you know that water heater will will one day that, uh, not water heater, the instant shower. Do you know that thing will kill you? And I said, what? And I went through, I saw the workmanship was poor. And I went to my room and I looked at my mine and I told her, come and check whether mine is better. And she told me, eh, what's this one? And she called an electrician there and then and gave, it, gave her, me her phone and told me, can you talk to him? And I fixed that. Now, such a special person who is so keen on details. I'm sure there are so many visitors who have visited me in that room. Even Mumbi was there, and she could not even see that. <laughs> but Yoki had that detail, and that's why we celebrate her. We pray to God that we may pick this from Yoki. To leave simple things simple, not to complicate things that are simple. And we pray for Kirago and the boys and all the family members that they may find peace and consolation in God. As I end, I try as much as possible to be an authentic person myself, especially in my friendships. And I hold people to account and I like being held to account. And that's the same thing that I like having with God. That what you tell me, I hold you to account. And when God says, come to me, all you are who labor and are overburdened, and I'll give you rest, I hold him to account to that. I see this family labors, and they are overburdened by this loss. Please, God, give them rest. And we cannot give them rest. We cannot give them peace. We'll be here. We'll not be there tomorrow. We can promise to be there. But God hold them. And that is what I am asking God this, this moment. That they are laboring. They are overburdened. Give them rest. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for the Moses, for those kind words. And I believe quite a number of us, if you were to be given a chance and opportunity, you, everyone would have something to say. I believe every one of us would have something to say. But because time and chance may not be able to, I can see there is a, a condolences book there. You can 
write something, say something on pen and paper, and the same condolences will continue. I'm also notified that there is Father Paul. He's in our midst. We appreciate you. Father Paul, where are you? Maybe you can start just to... Uh, thank you, Father Paul. We, uh, we appreciate you. You know, Amidis, thank you. Thank you so much. And because we are here, because of all of us, we came from different directions, from different levels, from Meru, from Nairobi, from Jolo, because of Joki. And she touched us in so many ways. It's a hard day. And I appreciate each and every one of you for coming. Can you shake hand to your neighbor? Tell them, thank you for coming. Thank you. Knowing very well that you will not be welcomed by Joki, but you decided to come. We appreciate it. Even the other neighbor who have ignored you, shake their hearts. <laughs> and so Joki touched one of uh, the Talking Hearts family here, and she wants to say something. So may we listen and... So I don't like get crushing, but in the spirit of inclusivity, Njoki went the extra mile. And that five minutes visit to our college made a difference in the life of this, uh, our student who is deaf. Njoki came in with Sister Mumbi and one other sister to say hello to us because she has been supporting her education. She had gotten a C, and for a deaf to get a C at form four, that is a very bright girl. So when I met her in the slum and brought her in, I told her, come in, the Lord will provide for your school fee. After three years in the house, she came and I realized she was very bright. And I told my friend Joki, please help me hold the hand of this, her friend, and she has been helping her. And when they came in with uh, her friend, with uh, Joki, Joki looked at her and called the mother aside and said, what is the most urgent thing about this girl? We didn't have her chef's coat and she was going to do neck exams. And she gave the money for her. She did exams last month and that exam was possible. The chef's jacket and all that attire was possible because of Joki. These are the people who come into your life. It doesn't matter how long they make a difference. The Lord is making a difference in her life in heaven. May God bless her. And uh, her prayers, when she heard about it, she said she must come. And uh, they are praying for her because that uh, helped by extension. Also, the other deaf in the hostel had some unga for food. May the Lord bless your heart, Njoki. We loved you, and we are all praying for you. Thank you for your spirit of inclusivity and that extra heart. Amen. Thank you, sister. Thank you for the good work you are doing there and even letting us know that Jock even went an extra mile, even to those who are different in our society. And I believe each and every one of us, even as I come to the word this very afternoon, that we will live here knowing that we are not here for just to come, live, and go. God created us and has given us a chance to leave a mark, to leave a legacy. Regardless of how many years you will stay on this life, may you not be the, like Medusela, who lived 969 years, and nothing more is said about them. Amen? A lot has been said about Joki, just those 40 plus years, 46 years, and a lot has been said. Ask yourself silently, what will be said of me when that day comes? Amen? Thank you, thank you, and I will see how we can extend that good work that Joki was doing, even to the community of Talking hearts, we see how we can also support from a personal level as a pastor and us joining here saying that we can extend the legacy of Joki, isn't it? One day Elisha and Elijah saw what Elijah was doing and asked him, can I have just a double anointing of your spirit? I want to do double of what you have been able to do. And most of the time, when we sit down and listen to the departed, our ask is, if she did that, can I be able, now that I've been left behind, can I be able to do a double of what that particular person did? For Fred, 
this a lot and I know you miss our dear sister but God will continue giving you grace to navigate through with the young boys on what to do at any given time he is very close to you God is very close to you than everyone else at this moment that's you remember God visiting Joshua and he told in Joshua chapter 1 and he told Moses he told Joshua my servant Moses is dead so be strong and be courageous I will be with you Whatever he intended to do with Moses, he would do and he would walk with Joshua. And that's how Joshua was able to lead the entire nation of Israel to the promised land. For Fred, may you know this, you are not alone. God is with you. Be close to him. Call unto him all the time. When things are hard, yes, you may shed a tear, but look above and see his goodness. See his favor. He is very close to you. He will take you through together with the boys. And therefore, May I dive into the word of the day, that the God of the mountain and the God of the valley, where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Father who made the earth and who made each and every one of us. When I was reflecting and looking forward to come and share this very afternoon, and I'll be mixing even Kikuyu because I know there are people from Gadaji. Is it Gadaji or Muti? Mo? What is the name? The other name? Matindiri. Matindiri. Yeah? God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. I'll be reading a text, and this came to my when Dad DK was talking about the body. And you think that this body is temporal. He mentioned that when he was sharing. And it's from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 5, uh, from verse 1 to, to 10. I read from NIV, and it says, For we know if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hearts, eternal in the heavens. Here indeed we groan, and long to put on our heavenly dwelling, so that by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For where we are still in this tent, we sigh with anxiety, not that we, could, we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage, we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For if we walk by faith, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive good or evil according to what he has done in the body. Praise God. This is Paul writing to the church of Corinth. And he is reminding them that the body we live into is like an earthly tent. This is just a, an, an empty shell now that is here. Jockey is in heaven. The Bible says to be absent in this body, it, it is to be present with the Lord. And therefore, this is just an empty shell that is here. Jockey, she may be following this harvest, her spirit from her father's bosom in heaven. And therefore, Paul was reminding the church of Corinth that the body that we, we are into are like this tent. And tent signifies three things. And I would like us to capture that every time now from today, you'll be looking at a tent, you'll be seeing it in a different angle, reminding the body we are into. One is that the tent signifies temporality. Tent are very temporal. Was this tent here last week? Were they here last week? So they are here temporarily, isn't it? Tomorrow if you come here, will you find them here? So they have finished their assignment and work. And whoever pitched them will come, fold them, and take them back to the store or somewhere else, isn't it? The other thing about tents is that they signify the tents comes with different colors. Luckily today we have some that are only, oh, they are all white. 
and maybe if you look for yeah there's a green one up there so they have different colors and the other thing is that 10 signifies uh, has a uh, different sizes like this one you can see can accommodate one there's one that can accommodate 150 there's one that mega tent or mega doom that can accommodate even a thousand tents have different has those three perspective or aspect that I want us to dive into in reflect on in perspective to the bodies that we are we have that we call ourselves today I'm tall I may say pride myself that I'm six foot uh, six foot tall someone will say that they are big I don't know the sizes are different and so I'll start with the temporary the tents that we live in are temporary and temporary means that they come with different challenges and struggles sometimes they come with pain and sometimes they live you see they are put uh, they have some some holes our body as we live as we continue in this life you experience pain you experience challenges you experience grief like you are doing this very day you are hungry sometimes even earlier i was praying i was saying that the rain was almost falling down and i was just looking forward we need umbrellas but as i prayed i thank god that we are we uh, the the cloud passed our body, sometimes we are feeling cold. I can see some going to get some jacket because our bodies are temporary. The tent signifies temporarily. The challenges, the pain you go through, those are just struggles that we face in this life that we live into. The second thing is that the tent have different colors. And colors differentiate what? The gift that God has given unto us. A lot have been said about Jockey and what she did from teaching, from helping the needy. A lot of stuff have been said about her and have been written down. And as I said, if we were to be given an opportunity, we could have gathered more than what have been said. And thank you for the brother uh, Henry, even for capturing it very well, even how she loved music. Wow, what a tribute. Thank you, thank you. As well, Moby, she taught you how to swim. She's a good swimmer. Yeah? And if dad also could have been asked something, he could have said who the daughter was. Yeah? Those who worked with her. That's the color of Jockey. She had different gifts and talent. And therefore, each and every one of us, when we were created, when we were created, God did so with a design and with a purpose. And therefore, there is no one here who is just here to come, live, stay, sit, eat, and go. Every one of us here is gifted. You have a talent. Amen? Every one of us. Every one is gifted and has a talent. If my gift is to teach, if my gift is to preach, may I preach like there will be no other preacher in this life. If your gift is teaching, may you teach like there will be no other teacher or, or preacher. If your work is to cook or hospitality, may you do baking. Whereby people say, wow, have you ever tasted her cake? Like now today has been testified of what our dear sister did. That the families, those families from the, from the banking sector, when they had uh, in an event, there was a cake from Jockey. What a tribute. So what, ask your neighbor, what is your gift? Do you know your gift? Have you discovered your gift? What are you doing with it? Even the other neighbor who is ignoring you, ask them. Ask them. Do they know their gift? I'm here as a servant telling you every one of us here is gifted. And if you don't know your gift, my desire is that may you discover your gift. May you discover your gift. And as you discover your gift, may you develop it. And as you develop it, may you deploy it to the world. The three is about the gift. You remember the young boy in Matthew chapter 14 when Jesus was, was, was teaching and he, he looked at the crowd like we, uh, we are seated here and he realized they were hungry. And he asked one of his disciples, where can we get food to feed this multitude? And the Bible says the disciples were thinking, let's send them home. A quick fix, isn't it? Let's send them home. Then after they eat, they do what? They come back. But the Bible says he was asking them so that he to test them. For he knew what he needed, he was to do. And my brother, Andrew, is the only one who recognized a young boy 
who had two fish and five loaves of bread. And that boy, when he gave it to Jesus, the two fish and the five loaves were able to feed a multitude, thousand, because he submitted the literal. What is that literal gift that you have? What is that literal potential? Maybe just saying now, this is the time, as a family say, maybe just to sing a song. Maybe teaching my children how to cook. Maybe it's taking my, my family for, a, for camping or for a hike. Maybe it's visiting my dad. I don't know. What is that gift that you have? Maybe it's writing, composing songs. What is that gift that you have that the world can say she sang so well? We had our sisters who said she lead worship. And she came and said, I have this gift. Can I lead a song during the service? Do you know your gift? And that gift that you have is not for you. It's for the world. If you're an accountant, can there be so many other accountants who say, why not for so and so? I don't know whether I could have passed my accountancy uh, exams. Maybe you're an engineer. How many other engineers do you have behind you? You can say, I've mentored others. If you are an elder and you have succeeded well in marriage and you are plating yourself, we have, we, have, we have been married for the last 40 years, how many others young people can say, young couples can say that our marriage stood because this couple stood for us, worked with us, mentored us, showed us the way. Currently in our churches and you know what's going on, quite young marriages, are hap uh, divorces are happening. As late as that is, late that is, are divorcing. And you wonder, where are they going? Steve, I know you lead premarital counseling. And it is not the sweet thing to do, to see. The people who have led in premarital, and you say that, now you see now they are divorcing. It's not the best thing. It's not the best thing. But I know there are others here who have lived to test the uh, test of time. When things were even very hard back in the day, but you held each other and you were able to raise a family. So the gift, the talent that God has given each and every one of us today, as we are reminded by our sister Jockey, and she has gathered us all us here, in her absentia, she is reminding us, what is your gift? Deploy it to the world. And if you don't know it, discover it and develop it for the world to benefit. Amen? Amen? That's the size. Uh, that was the color. Different colors signifies your gift, your talent. So the first one was temporal. That the tent signifies very temporary. May you know you will not be here for, forever. We are here very, in a very temporary time. And the Bible says we are being, as we have read, God is, going, is doing for us a new home, eternal home where will be no pain, where will be no struggle, where we never feel hungry or feel cold, there is a home where we are going. Even if you live a hundred years, it's still temporary in God's purview. So may we know there is somewhere where we are going. May we prepare for it. May we not just live for the sake of living. Saying that men, mere men and women who just lived and that nothing that was recorded or written about them because they just lived as mere men. May from today say, I'm going to, do a, I, I'm going to leave a, a mark in my life. It may be your house help. It may be your driver. It may be your, 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 your security man at the gate. Can I say from today on, I'll get to know what is their challenge? What is it in them? Where do they come from? Can I leave a mark in their life beyond the salaries I pay for them? I say this one, because they are in my life, I will change them. For the few years I have been married, I told my wife, there are people who have invested in us. And because they have done this, after seeing all those statistics, I said, we'll take, even if it's one, we'll start in the gap. Anyone who is zero to seven years in marriage, we'll be working with them weekly. In areas communication, where, where marriages, they don't know how to communicate to each other. You know, after dating, going to the honeymoon, you come back now, you realize, oh, these guys are different than the one that I was dating. 
Now communication becomes a bit tricky. And if it's a communication failing in marriage, and decided we'll be teaching them, taking them through communication in marriage. Finance in marriage. Now you are together. How do you handle finances? Because those are some of the things that are triggering divorces. Are marriages failing to, to, to succeed? And the other one is about raising a godly generation and solving conflicts together. Whereby even if you conflict each other, how do you handle your issues with love and with kindness? Knowing that we are, we are, we are on a journey. Sometimes you listen to those things that make people that uh, they, are, they, are, they are going to divorce is that this guy doesn't come home early, he comes at 10 or 11. And you wonder, you need to sit with an elder. Those who have lived behind, that they tell you, your dad will come after three days. And they are here, they can testify that, isn't it? Yeah, the elder generation. You see, they know. But you are now making noise. At, at he came home last night at mid, midnight. Now I'm going, I'm parking. You're parking, you're going where? Go to an elder, consult her. And you realize there's nothing you haven't seen. And God, she'll pray with you and God will give you grace to, to, to persevere. The other thing, the, other, the third thing, and I'll be very, uh, very short actually as we pray for the family. Uh, the, the ten signify very temporarily. So may you be reminded we are here for a short time. We are temporal. The second thing is that about size. What is that gift? Why God created you? He told Jeremiah, I knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. The days ordained of you were already written down of me. So life doesn't start at, con at conception, as the science tells us. God told Jeremiah, I knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. So each and every one of us, God knew us. We are not here by mystic. And we are here because God had a purpose and a reason, and a divine reason for that matter. So may we know, what is that why God created me? Why do I live? Why do I exist? So that we don't live for just for the sake. So know your color. Know your, your size. You know your color. So know your, ten, know your gifting and your, your talent. That, that one is about the size. And the size signifies the capacity. One tent like this one is a, maybe a one-seater tent. Maybe that's a 50 tent. We have another up there. What is that size that you have? The size, the gifting. You're supposed to, some of us have the capacity to accommodate a hundred. But you are only the two of you. You have the capacity to assist, to help a hundred plus. But you have only assisted two or five or ten. The size, the capacity, the many years that you live in this life, it's not just for living for the sake of it. It's to live a legacy. It's to live an impact and a positive impact for that matter. So may we not, never be like Methuselah in Genesis, who lived 960, 969 years, and nothing much is said about it. The grandfather of Noah. Jockey have lived for those 46 years. And a lot have been said about her. What is that that society can talk about? From the husband. Not only the husband alone, but the flesh of the husband. That was remarkable. In our generation, we are into Fred. Very few are able to connect to that level. Isn't it? So let's appreciate Fred. That through that, through Jockey now, she was able to connect even with the husband's friends. And they became, a, they became a kind of a society. And they are here to testify that. Thank you. Thank you, team, for studying in the gap. May you work even with the younger men who are coming up, even in the banking sector. When they start getting those few coins, may they not feel like now they, they, are, they, they own the world. Teach them. Mentor them. Tell them there's, there's a journey ahead. So that they don't waste their time. You know, they buy Subaru and they make a lot of noise in our city. At 2 a.m. Isn't it? I visit some in, even in the hospital. They crash and are out about. And you find uh, uh, legs are hanging. And you realize it's just no one was walking with them. Because you have walked together and you have held each other together. Can you see those who are being recruited? And as you see them coming from the university, they are coming as interns, now they are uh, permanent. Walk with them. Say, this one will not get lost. Hold them accountable. Sometimes they are very tricky. 
They say, yes, yes, before you call them, they are telling me, now I got this call, now I'm in Mombasa. I know how they behave, but don't tire. Walk with them. Amen? Let's walk with them. Let's see if one, one is a majority in the God's kingdom. One is a, a majority. So know your capacity. Know your capacity. So if you're able to mentor 10, well and good. For us, every Monday, zero to seven years in marriage, we have a session online guiding them as them asking questions and tell, not because we, we know it all but you know we have something that we can give we have something that we can give and i believe each and every one of us i said you have a gift and you have a talent you can be a blessing to someone else you can be a blessing to someone else so may we be intentional in our living may we know that we live not for our own only Actually, I always say, you start living the moment you wake up in the morning and you realize, if I don't go to this work today, if I don't make this coin today, there's, some, there's a child somewhere who will sleep hungry. There's a widow somewhere who will not have a shelter. That's when you start living. And because a jockey has gathered us this very day, it's not by mistake. God never gathered his people in vain. He has gathered us with a purpose and a reason. May it be reminded to us. That this life, yes, is very temporal, but even as a temporal as it is, we can leave a mark and a positive mark in our life, in our society, in our community. Even as I come to conclusion, last year, even when we were preparing for the elections, the very country, I said, What is my role? Even from where I sit, as being in the city, a church in the city. So we see a lot and we hear a lot. And I said, from my desk, what do I need to do? And I said, I'll be intentionally be praying for our counties. I'll be intentionally be praying for the leaders that we are looking forward to be elected. And I mobilized the team and the family that uh, I'm in charge of small groups. Uh, the church is where the church and I pray that one day those who have never been there I will visit. It's a big congregation. And so, so us to be able to serve them better, we grow small, small groups. So I'm in charge of those small groups, about 200 in the city, that meets at homes. And so I encourage them and I challenge them. Let's adopt counties. There's those who adopt county of Nakuru, Nyadalwa, Mubasa, all the 40, 40, 48 counties, inclusive the diaspora. And we said, let's pray. Let's tell God. Because God, pray, ask, and it shall be given unto you. And as we were reflecting about it, we prayed, and I told them, not only pray, can you do a prayer drive to those particular counties? Asking God, give us the right leaders of our time. Because if you see it, you knew us even before we came to be. This country is older than 100 years old. I believe we have very few people who are older than 100 in this country. So this country belongs to God. No one created it. And so I said, we are next, we go to the owner and ask, what is it that you need for this country? From the leadership, political leadership, to the family leadership, to the church leadership. And I said, I'll be intentional. And so we mobilized and we'll be praying. And we walked around, I drove around almost to almost every county in this country. And I was scoop someone and speak forth. God give us the light leaders that we need in this country. And elections came, people voted the way they voted. And for me, I know it's in my heart that God gave us the leader that we, this country needed at this time. As far as they are, I knew they needed But to what for? And so he said, beyond that, we'll be reaching out even to these counties and telling that governor, we have, a, we have requested our time with you. The reason we are not here for tender or anything else, we are here to tell you, we prayed for this county before the elections. And we prayed for the right leadership. And God made it possible for you to be elected. Now that you are sitting in the seat of position, may you bring a positive influence during your time. And I said, we'll be, we'll be holding you accountable for that because we prayed. Our prayers were not in vain. And so we did that. We approached one of the governor as a pilot project in Niagara Malakwet. Maybe there's someone who comes from that region. And when he saw, he read the letter because we approached them through the letter. He said he has never seen something or had. He has been a, a deputy governor for the last 10 years. Now he's a, a governor and the youngest in the country. 
And so when I was conversing with him, I was conversing with a peer. And when he listened, he said, he has never had something of that sort from a church point of view. And he said, you not only meet me, you meet my entire government, the CEC, the officers, and what have you. And we sat down the whole day discussing what is that one thing that is making you lack sleep? Because we want to be intentional. We want to hold them accountable. That's why God has positioned us in the position of influence. Maybe you're in a position of influence whereby you can even offer scholarship or a child like this, young girl, who needs just a, a quote to do her exams. And she might meet a, miss, miss an exam because she doesn't have a dress code. And yet you can be able to do something of the sort. In our society where we are, there are so many things you can be able to do in that matter. Amen? And so for me, it's a challenge this very afternoon in this great gathering of our dear sister Joki. Because she has gathered us here, may we not say, where were you? And I'm talking about this Joki. May that not be the same. I'm talking Joki. And I'm talking about that this life is very temporal. To me, I need to know my talent. I need to know my gift. And after knowing my gift, I need to develop it. After developing, I need to deploy it to the world. Amen? I believe Mabia pasta kwa karibu kumaliza. <laughs> Na muulize kama amejua gift yake. Muulize. Ikiwa ni wakulima aremia goko matidiri aziufam mukirema mulemeta gutari adu agema kali maitora riri. Ukaugurwa te kuri mulemu wale maga aboga kana amiji itora ri amatidiri. Because God has given you that platform and that gift. It's an opportunity. The Bible says, whatever your heart finds to do, may you do it with gladness. It's your offering services, like our dear sisters. May we offer it with gladness and with joy, knowing that we are serving the Lord. Knowing that we are serving the Lord. That's why he has given you that opportunity to do that. And therefore, it's a kind reminder that this life is very temporal, this is a journey that we are going. Whether you live 40 years, whether you live 50, whether you live 100, it's a journey. And God has given us an opportunity. May you know this is temporary. There's a song, and I don't know my, our dear sister, that we sing about Mutolera wa Mudunota. Can you have that song? Media team there. Or oh, anyone can lead that song for us. As we call the family, we pray for them. I am not good. I'm not a good singer. They know. Yes, come, sister. Thank you. Let's appreciate her. It's a reminder for those who are not following that Greek that the life of a, a man is like this tent. When its, its work is done, it's folded and taken back. 
And that's what the life of our dear sister Jockey has done. God did it the best. That's what she knew, she knew and she had planned for, for our dear sister. And therefore, may we appreciate, may we accept, and may God give us that understanding that the life of Jockey, God had intended it for the way it has come to be. Amen? And therefore, may I call the family as we pray for them uh, as we proceed with the program. The immediate family. And as they come forward, we have this group that and said will sing. Let them, even the group, come forward. Committee, the committee, let them come forward together with the family. They'll sing and then we'll pray for the family. Dad Henry Mumbi, Fred and the boys, Anko Cousin. So the committee members we are joining, we're going to sing one song, the blessed assurance with the family. Kindly we go around the coffin, uh, all the committee members with the program, we are joining together. We're going to sing together with the family. All the committee members, the committee was made up of uh, family, friends, and uh, close uh, associates. Kindly, all the people in the ribbon I am having, uh, we are waiting for you. Every committee member sitting in Narombi, sitting in Jero, uh, kindly come. Kindly We're going come. to We're going stand, 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 stand around, around the coffin, around the, coffin, coffin. The, casket. the casket, kindly. kindly. Yeah, we are all standing, yeah? Standing, yeah? Okay, and the clergy, uh, for the Moses, Kalisto, Steve, the our house leader, was, uh, was, uh, where where the former host, the former host Fred and, and Jockey hosted. Jockey hosted. Steve, come over. Steve, come over. You'll be leading in one prayer. Steve. All committee members, wherever you are, we're waiting for you. The song we are singing is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. It is in the program. Uh, kindly join with the family. I don't know who is the choir reader. Irene. Kimutais. You're going to read us. Okay, members, let's sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a taste of glory divine, air of salvation, crutches of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy. Whispers of love, and this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. 
Visions of rapture now pass on my sight. Angels descending bring from above a cause of mercy with spars of love. And this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior, all I belong. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, all I Wacheni tuombe familia hii. Mungu akaweza kuwa pamoja na wao, Mungu angeweza kuwapa nguvu. Mungu akaweza kuandamana pamoja na wao kwa sababu aliyewaumba anajua kesho yao na vile itakavyokuwa. Let us pray. Mungu wetu ishie milele katika jina la mwana wako Yesu Kristo. Bado tunaendelea kulienzi na kulitukuza jina lako. Bado tunaendelea kukutukuza kwa sababu Mungu liye na nguvu na mamlaka. Mungu naendelea kutawala. Sante Mungu tu ni kwa sababu ya familia hii ya Kirogu, the entire uh, Kigudas. Na kushukuru Mungu ni kwa sababu uliwaona, uliwaumba, uliwajua hata kabla wakuje katika ulimwengu. Wewe ndiye uliye Mungu wao hata wakati huu. Na wewe ndiyo utaendelea kuwa Mungu wao hata wakati unaokuja. Mungu wetu atukumbushe ya kwamba hakuna jambo ama kitu moja ambacho kitatutenganisha na upendo wako na tueleza hata kifo kitatutenganisha na upendo wako. Kwa hivyo handi wakati huu tunajua ya kwamba upendo wako ni mkuu katika hii familia. Chungaji wako ni mkuu katika hii familia na Mungu wetu rafiki wako bando udhabiti katika hii familia. Na kwa hivyo tuendelea kuweka mikono ni ya mwako, mikono ambayo ni ya huruma, mikono ambayo inahimiza, mikono ambayo encourage, mikono ambayo inapatiana matumaini ili Mungu wetu kaweza kuandamana pamoja na wao. Na kabidhi watoto wao njoki mikono ni mwako wakati ambapo watakuwa na mwana mama yao ya kwamba Mungu wetu your presence itakuwa ina watoshelesha na kwamba Mungu wetu taendelea kuwapa nguvu katika haya maisha. I want to commit kirago before you wakati ambapo hata kwa karibu na mke wake ya kwamba Mungu wetu utasimama pamoja naye. Kimkumbushe ya kwamba oh is not lost because you're with him na kwamba utaandamana pamoja naye. Patie hekima inayohitajika ya kulea watoto na kuendesha maisha kwa sababu lazima yaendelee. Na kushukuru ni kwa sababu ya baba yao Nataka kumweka mikononi mwako Mungu wetu ya kwamba ukaweza kuendelea kumpa nguvu na uweza kuendelea kumsaidia katika safari kwa sababu sio laisi ya kwamba kupoteza mtoto wake na kwa hivyo kama vile ambavyo umekuwa naye naomba ukaandamana pamoja naye I want to commit Mombi and KK before you the dear loving father utakuwa pamoja na wao wakati ambapo wanamkosa mmoja wao ya kwamba utaendelea kuwahimiza na kuongeza imani yao na kuendelea kuandamana pamoja na wao as they carry out the responsibilities of the Lanja family i pray that lord you will not leave them but you walk with them just like you are sure Joshua that lord you also assure them when they are with you all things shall be possible mungu wetu naweka mikono ni mwako nikiomba that you offer the counsel because you are the prince of of peace you give them the peace that they need and because you're the greatest counselor that you continue to offer them the counsel that they need at this particular time and because you're the lord of all lords and the king of all kings i pray that you reign in their lives you also reign in their family and as a lord in the undertaking that you may walk with them we commit them and surrender them before you god that you surround them with your spirit so that dear loving father you may disconnect them from any spirit that will come to pull them back the lord you be with them and you walk with them anything that the evil one may have planned for this family we want to rise against it in the name of jesus christ we pray the lord you may take over this family you call it forward oh god that they may not ever regret that they have a gun like you but lord the lord always continue to 
witness of your goodness and your faithfulness in their lives because you walk with them. Therefore, we surrender them before you that God, you walk with them and you commit them before you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you. I think um, at this juncture, I'll request the family to just sit for a while. And um, we are going to have offering. That's it. Hovering, we are going to do the offering, um, courtesy of the family, because we have children who are in school. I do want to give a hand at least. Dadaye uh, to Joki, we are witnesses that he, she also extended her hand and helped the needy. So I think we can also do the same for the kids that have been left. And therefore, I will request uh, uh, Ruth, Ruth to come forward, lead us with songs, uh, together with Julia, come forward, you read us with songs as we give our offerings. We'll get a basket, we we'll place it here, we'll just come and give the offerings. Then after this, I will guide you on the way forward. So Ruth and Julia, your presentations now, kindly. Uh, Ruth. DJ. Bana sifiwe. Tuka kumtukuza mwenye simungu. Usimame na mungu wema. Ama usimame na mungu kidete. I'm a gospel artist and I belong here. As they sing, to Tanza E tent, to Uja Hivi, we offer to Gimaliza, to Enda Kwaile, to Tamalizia Hapa kindly. Kwahivio, to Smame tu, uh, Kiendelea na Wimbaji, to Okoya Muda. Yes, Mama na Muki Betty, what about you? I end the poor, what's your name, baby? You're a moe. Ruth akiendelea wale ambao angetaka ku offer through Mpesa the Mpesa number is 0711 wale ambao angetaka ku offer through Mpesa 0711 881882 let me take that again Zero seven one one eight eight one eight eight two. Tafadali hiyo ki tumia ita tusaidia. Karibu. Gaiyo re moega, gaiyo matuwe, dwa na mondo na wego aga hinde ya keha.
Mungu abariki sana. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Tumwambie ni vyema taraja yako ifanyike kazi. Si hivyo? Angalia mwenye mko karibu na wewe. Mwambie usikubali mimi namwambie wewe ukiwa uhai. Wewe huo. Usikubali mimi mwenyewe. Wewe ukiwa uhai DJ Herebo. Hivyo ndivyo nitasema. God bless. Thank you. Uh, let's give thanks to the offering as we had it to the family. This is just a kite support. Everything that you have given, and I believe you have given it to a willing free, that it will be support, particular to the immediate family and the boys. Uh, they are in school and they will come in handy. So thank you. Thank you. We continue singing after this. And after this, after the, off, uh, the prayer of the offering, we head over uh, to the to the green side, and therefore I will ask the the team that is in charge of the procession to take charge, uh, to take their position as we pray for the offering. Let's give thanks, Almighty Father, our King and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are, grieved, we are very grateful for this giving. You are the one who showed us how to give. You are the greatest giver. You loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son. And Amber Father, this represents part of the many gifts that you have given unto us. And you have brought this part of it, O oh dear Lord, particular to this family of Kerago, O oh Almighty Father, that even as they continue, as they continue in this season that they are into, Father, that it will be a kind gesture to them, O oh Abba Father, to be able to pay bills, to be able to do all they need to do within the season, O oh Almighty Father. Therefore, we thank you for everyone who has been able to give. Thank you for even those who didn't manage to give because either they didn't have something or did they have an understanding. May you give them a revelation and understanding what it means to give. For you say the heart that gives receiveth back, O Abba Father. Therefore, Father, we worship. I pray, Father, there may be abundance, 34, 60 fold, 100 fold to everyone who have managed to do something, particularly during this period to this family, O oh dear Lord. How we worship you, how we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. So may I call the family we had over this to them. So before the procession, we'll be having the vote of thanks. Uh, who's doing the vote of thanks? Sam. Yes, I can't do that. To put a vote of that.
kuna chakula na ni kingi but i think people eat after work so the food is going to be prayed for but before you've worked kindly don't eat until the work is over you sit and eat in fact if there's somebody who is hungry it is me and i have to finish up there bwana sifiwe so tutangojea so tutaomboa chakula and then after that we'll have the vote of thanks hata tushukuru tu hata kama kazi haijaisha najua mtu anapewa shukrani after kazi imeisha si ndivyo hivyo but he is hoping anapo tushukuru ya kwamba we will not degrade our responsibility ya kile kilitufanya tunje hapa so may god help us and may god give us some patience so uh, i request mrs jean karanja jean karanja to come forward and give thanks because of the food bwana yesu asifiwe kwa majina ni hayo hayo mmesikia naitwa mrs jean jerry karanja na kristo ni mwokozi wa maisha yangu joki was a dear friend to me i'm not going to talk because time time is not in my favor so let me pray for the food she was my niece condolences to kiragos family and kigudas family and the entire warungis family let us pray our heavenly father in the mighty name of jesus christ we come before your presence this afternoon with thanks giving in our hearts we lift your name on high O jehovah god because you are the king of kings and you are the lord of lords none is like you jehovah we worship you O jehovah god because of whom you are O god we lift your name O jehovah this afternoon we are so grateful mighty father because of the far you have taken us we have traveled far and wide O jehovah god thank you lord for each and everything we have which has taken place we thank you lord for the preparations which have taken place in this place we thank you even for the word of jehovah god it has nourished our spirit we have realized today that we are temporary in this world we are just tents and you can come for us any time jehovah god we want to thank you we believe in you from Genes from the holy book from genesis Gen genesis to revelation and we know jehovah god you have got good plans for us you have prepared good a good place for us jehovah god i pray that you are going to uphold this family with your righteous right hand you have promised us lord when we walk with you you shall never leave us nor forsake us you have promised us oh jehovah god where you have kept you have prom you have promised us that there is a place where we shall all go one day when you you when the, that our tents will be destroyed which are which are our, our earthly bodies jehovah god help us to live in obedience of your word help us o king of glory to walk like you when you are, you are in this world we cannot be righteous unless we pa we are perfected by you god wash us with your precious blood king of glory cover each and every person who has attended this ceremony with the precious blood of our lord jesus christ father god we know as we have been nourished spiritually our physical body needs food we pray that uh, the food which will be served to us O king of glory will be sanctified we pray even for those people who have prepared that food and who have made this ceremony a success we pray for each and everything O king of glory and we thank you and we worship you in Jesus mighty name we pray and give thanks thank you mrs karanja for the prayer for food uh, mine is simple is to give thanks to give vote of thanks to everyone that has participated in this but before I do that, I want to introduce myself. My name is Samburu. And on behalf of the organizing committee that we are sitting in Nairobi, I was a chair, uh, co-chairing with uh, my brother, Dr. Waringi. And uh, just want to say one thing. I have known Fred from the time we were starting life, very humble beginning when we were joining campus. 
a teacher at the university and we schooled together we would go to same class classes sometimes and later on when we left campus fred got married to jockey i was not very close to jockey then and uh, so when we parted with me, I we left the country and went to study and Fred started the career. And so fast forward, later on in life, I decided to get married. And I got married in Rwanda. And when we were coming back, the very closest friend that I believed would help my wife to settle in was Jockey. And by default, then we became very close friends and they were always together. They have raised the children together. My wife uh, would consult with Jockey on uh, family matters. They educate kids together. They, we ended up doing a lot of things in common. And so when this news came to me uh, that morning, I called my wife. I was out of the house, and I told my wife, Jockey has collapsed. The whole day, she kept writing me messages that I was not getting any responses. And she kept asking, how is Mama Karongo? How is Mama Karongo? How is Mama Karongo? And in the evening, when we had done with a lot of the day's work, I decided to just tell her, Jockey is no more. It was not easy even to break the news to the kids who are very close to Jockey's kids. But the grace of God has continually been on our side. We have managed to walk the journey. We have seen the grace and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding, working in the lives of a family, the friends, and the boys. And, and we continually are grateful to God. And so this day, as we bid farewell to Josephine, we just want to release her and with a lot of gladness in our hearts to wait upon what God is doing in the life of Kirago and the boys. I will f not forget, Pastor, to mention this. They have continually said in every time I stand to speak, after we Cyrus broke the news and we sobbed and all that, a voice rose in my heart and told me, uh, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Rise up and hold the Kirago family together. And God has given us a grace. And uh, I want to tell Kirago, there's a new thing that God is doing in your life. Mombi and Dad and um, KK, I want you to know that the Lord has not forsaken you. The Lord has just found it is nice to take away Joyce to her resting place. But that does not mean he has forgotten you. He is doing a new thing. And as Mombi told me when the, she landed, let's do this and rest, uh, put Jockey to rest. And then we wait and see what it is that God wants to do. So members and friends, community, church, let's wait and see what God is doing in the life of these dear ones. I think having said that, mine is simple to give a vote of thanks. And we start by thanking God who has been so gracious to us. We kept being reminded that this place rains. Father, your prediction was right, it rains after three. And today God granted favor to us. It is not going to rain until we finish. And we want to give, be grateful to God. Apart from weather, he has also been good to us, encouraging us. And most importantly, he gave jockey to us, and he gave us reason for us to be here today. I've met a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, some we schooled in high school, like Father, we, he reminded me I was his mono <laughs> when we were in high school. Uh, there are many people we've met, and the reason why we've met is because God gave us Joycean. And uh, so she became the center of attraction to all of us. And we want to be grateful to God. And I know God is looking deep down in our hearts and can see how grateful we are to him. Then a uh, singer of a song says, Then sings my soul, how, how great thou art. Our God is great. He's been gracious and good to each one of us. I also want to thank the family for the good work they have been doing. 
um, Jockey collapsed in the house, and uh, when she did, she called her husband from Nairobi, and uh, friend, and uh, dad, and everyone in the family. Everybody did as much as they could to try and rescue the life of this dear one. I will tell you here, congregants, if there's anything the family could do to rescue Jockey, they did it. Dad was there, a medic in him, he tried to resuscitate her. They did everything, and indeed now we know it was the will and the purpose of God that she rests. Papa had, uh, had already summoned KK and Mombi to come. For whatever reason, he had wanted them to come, but God had a better reason. And so family led by Papa Kigoda and uh, everyone else, mom in Anyuki, um, Zeki Gatuma and the others that have held Kiragu and the children so well at such a time you want to say asanteni sana mumefanya kazi mzuri na kazi ya kufana. May the Lord God bless you. Boys, you've been great men. We agreed this week we are going to call you men going forward. They, when the news were broken, Kiragu was surrounded by the boys and they saw the dad in that very moment. But they stood with the father uh, Kyle, great to hold the boys together and they are around the dad to move. And as the dad was running with all this program, the boys kept strong and they gave dad the room to be able to do what he needed to do. That's Anten Isana for that great work that you've been doing. Thank you for holding the young Sua uh, very strongly that he is fine because you guys have shown you are aware with him. You've uh, given as a reason to stand with you. And we promise you, Kirago and boys and the family will stand with you as friends and will not leave you as strong as a God give us the grace. I want to thank another group, the team of the, the committee members that are working with us in Nairobi. The committee member to stand up wherever you are kindly stand up i know some of them are very busy up there committee members kindly stand up the team that was standing with us in nairobi i know a lot of them are standing already some uh, a Santen, a San, and those they are very busy in their respective roles the committee did a lot of work they did the uh, running up and down whatever organization you are seeing here it is a committee that was doing so. But as I do so, I also want to appreciate the team that has stood together with Dad in Ijaton, led by Reverend um, Catherine and the other team, and Father, the Kagwis, and the others that were in Ijaton. Tunataka kusema asante ni sana kwa kazi jema mumefanya. We want to appreciate the local administration here. We saw the assistant chief and the chief. We also have the local security police officer, the OCS in the area. We want to appreciate the good work you've done. You've organized this place so well. Uh, most of us committee members are strangers this place. But we have an assurance that all things are well so far and it will be well, courtesy of the local administration who have also organized this police security to take care of everything. Tunasema asanti sana chief na timu yako tumefurahia kazi jema mmetufanyia. We have come this far because we have our suppliers. The people who supply the sound system, the people who supplied uh, you know, the coffin and all that, the people who supplied the tent, the team that is working on the live streaming. All the suppliers, the printing people, we want to say asante ni sana. Even the team that is preparing food for us, tunataka kusema asante ni sana. There is a special group of people I want to appreciate who have been the caregivers at home. We have the Wambua. There's a young man called Wambua who stays with Mze. Wambua has done a lot of work. And uh, even that time when they were trying to take care of uh, Jockey in the house. Wambua was the right hand man of KK and Papa at home. We want to say asante sana. And now wale watu alikuwa nao. Kuna anti mungini alikuwa kule nyumbani. Tunataka kusema asante ni sana. Mulishikiria maneno mbaga saire turifika na mambo ikaenda vizuri. And you've been uh, in that house ensuring that everything goes on well. We want to say 
Thank you very much. Kindly receive our appreciation. The Caprola School, where the boys have been schooling, uh, tunataka kushukuru sana kwa kazi jema mmefanya. They have uh, traveled to Egerton to be with the boys at some point. And they have also come here. Tunataka kusema asante sana mwarimu. Wenda mpreke asante sana kwa wale wengine waja kuja. A lot of the boys and girls came for, uh, for the memorial yesterday. And we had a very good time as they played with the boys. The Egerton University community read, Dr. read by Dr. Muthoka our lecturer um nataka kusema asanteni sana kwa kuja na kazi mzuri mmefanya it has been not be easy if it were not for the role that you guys are played tunasema asante sana when professor hilda left uh, the Igaton community continued being a friend of the family and you've been so instrumental in settling the family and ensuring continuity the cousins who have done a lot of work led by the MC and Dr. Warungi, uh, tunataka kusema asanteni sana, you've done a good work, you've been driving Kirago around, you've kept the family alive, you've done a lot of work. We want to say thank you very much. You have shown that you are a pillar of strength to this family. Continue doing so, and we know that God is going to bless you. Uh, Egerton University Funeral Home uh, preserved our sister immediately. She rested and uh, they gave us very, very hospitable welcome and they gave us nice service. We never had any struggle when picking the body of Joki to mash. We want to say Asante Sana. Wherever they are, let somebody reach them and tell them we are grateful for that. Umash Funeral Home, they received us. We arrived there late at night. They, they received us so well. They took care of us. We had a very good time with them. Uh, at some point, I had now to call them and ask them, is this how you operate? Keep the spirit. Umash has been very good to us. And even now, they are with us here. They have not left us. They have been such a, a supportive team. Umash, take our thanks to the directorship and the leadership thereof led by our sister Ruth there. Special thanks I want to give here. And there are people who have worked very, very tirelessly to ensure this place work. Uh, led by our brother Kimani Kim Kim. Uh, he took Fred from that day. You can be sure getting Fred from Nairobi all the way to Nakuru with all that kind of an environment. Kim held him together. Uh, Kim, you've done a good job. We want to appreciate that. The way you are seeing this compound where we are standing, it is not the way it was when we came here. But Kim organized with the team, and uh, he assigned a gentleman called Danny. I don't know whether Danny are around. Uh, I can see they are together somewhere. They did a lot of work. And as you can see, the place is well organized. Tunastaka kusema asanteni sana Kim and Danny and the team that you are leading for the good works that you've done. Danny has also done a lot of work organizing the transport for the family. Uh, and sana Danny. Danny came in as an angel to us uh, in the midst of knowing, you know, asking how are we going to organize all the logistics. We met him in Akuru and he told us, guys, I'm going to run the race. He has done a lot. And I want to say asante sana Danny for accepting God to use you in a special way. We have a community in Kitengera where our friend and family live. Uh, we had a mechanic talk here, Meshak, and uh, we want to say Asanteni Sana, Kitengera community, for the good work you've done. You stood with the family, those of you, friends of uh, Cyrus that came in and uh, stood with the family when Fred and uh, Cyrus were running to, you know, at the, that very moment. The Kitengera community stepped in and did a good job. We want to say Asante Sana, Mungu Awabariki Sana. And finally, and not the least, I want to give thanks to the Capital Market team, the CFC group, the Stanbic group, and all those other groups that have stood so strongly with Kirago. Mungu Awabariki Sana. And uh, so I want to call upon the poor bearers because it's time now for us to move to the graveside. I want to call the cousins and the other members who are the pallbearers. 
And as I do that, I want to thank the members of this community, Matindiri, for holding forth for us here, and particularly for those gentlemen who came in and dug the grave. Tunataka kusema ni asante ni sana. The girls, the girls, asante ni sana. I want the girls and the poor bearers to come here. The girls and the poor bearers, we want now to go to the graveside and we want to uh, stand. Uh, the pastor is going to guide us on how the procession is going to be. Kindly, the poor bearers, we are waiting for you so that the pastor can lead us. I can see them walking and I wanted to say, Asante ni sana. Kama sija kuhesabu, sija taja wewe, kazi umefanya, and you know you did something special, however little it is, we want to say asanti na mungu akubariki. Soon it's gonna rain, so we're gonna move faster to save the rain. Kindly poor bearers, get to the coffin and uh, distribute the finalia as the pastor leaders to the next level. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tunakushukuru atawewe. Kwa sababu ya kutushukuru. May God bless you. Uh, we are going to be a bit faster now because it can rain any time. So we are all going to be upstanding. And we sing a kikuyu song. Nikore furoli muegama. That is the song that we are going to sing. And once we are done with that, I will request the, the artists. Waendele na nyimbo zao tunapo endelea. Nikore fururi mwega ma Nantonge teki ato Alonga Ayoko Ato da nekange Ilo da kwa eso Nito na shamani Ladies and cousins to assist in the wreath. Cousins. Nito kai na nye mbonjega. Iri asha ando are aderu. Ona lo maronga ito. Matika igwaru. The family move together with the, with the pastors. Kindly, family members move together with the pastors and we'll be followed. Let's move behind the casket. Family, let's move in the interest of time. <laughs> Okay, let us pray, let us pray. Move 
wetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunashukuru kwa sababu ulimtuma mwana wako Yesu Kristo katika ulimwenguni na wakati ambapo aliyekuwa msalabani na akafa aliweza kuwepo kwa kaburi ikawa ni kama kielelezo kwetu tukifa ya kwamba tutakuwa tunawekwa kwa makaburi na kwa hivyo katika kaburi hii ambayo ni ya ndende yetu Josephine tunaomba ya kwamba Mungu wetu utaiweka wakfu na utaitenga na kaburi zingine zote ili kila wakati watu wako wanapokuja hapa na wakati ambapo wamelala hapa kaweza kulala kwa amani na watu wako wanapokuja katika hii kaburi wakaweza kushuhudia wema wako na rehema zako and therefore we want to announce this praise for the as a resting praise for our sister in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen nataka kukumbusha ya kwamba mwanadamu aliyezaliwa na mwana wake siku zake za kuishi sio nyingi naye huja taabu yeye huchanua kama vile huwa kisha hukatwa ukimbia kama kivuli wala hakai kamwe hiyo ni ayupo 14 moja mpaka mbili ningeomba ya kwamba wale ambao wanateremsha mwili tukaweza kuteremsha pole pole
come and do it, the Lord of care. Precious Savior, seal a refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. To thy friend is Christ for safety. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his house you take a shield. Thou find a soul is there. Kati ya uzima tu katika kufa tutake msaanda wetu kwa nani ila kwako wewe e bwana baya kwa haki tukizwa na dhambi zetu lakini bwana Mungu ndiye mtakatifu sana bwana mwenye uwezo wote mwokozi mtakatifu mwenye rehema nyingi usitie katika maumivu machungu ya mauti ya milele wazijua e bwana sidi za mioyo yetu siasibe masikio yako ya rehema tunapokuomba tuachilie bwana ulio mtakatifu sana Mungu mwenyezi mwokozi mtakatifu mwenye rehema mrukumu mwenye mwema wa milele saa yetu ya mwisho usitutie uh, usituache kufarakana nawe kwa maumivu ya mauti ningeomba tukaweza kupewa mchanga wachungaji ambao wako hapo Mungu kwa kwa Mwenyezi Mungu amependa kwa rehema zake nyingi kujitolea roho ya ndada yetu mpendwa aliyefariki Josephine Joki sisi tuarudisha mwili wake adhini ndongo kwa undongo majivu kwa majivu na mavumbi kwa mavumbi kwa tumaini dhabiti pasipo shaka na ufufuko kwenye uzima wa milele kwa bwana wetu Yesu Kristo atakayekubali mwili wetu wa unyonge pate kufanana na mwili wake wa utukufu waweza ule ambao kwa kuwa aweza hata kupitisha vitu vyote chini Viwe chini yake na tuombe Mwenyezi Mungu ambaye kwake zaishi roho zao waliofariki dunia katika Bwana na kwako zakaa katika furaha na kustarehe roho za waaminifu 
kisha kukutolea uh, kutolewa katika mzigo wa mwili huu. Tukushukuru sana kwa sababu umependa kumtoa huyo dada yetu katika taabu za dunia hii ya dhambi. Tukuomba upende kwa hisani yako, kuitimiza upenzi jumla ya taula wako na kuhimiza ufalme wako wa milele ili sisi pamoja na wote waliofariki katika imani ya kweli e jina lako takatifu tupate utimilifu wetu na raha kwetu mlini na rohoni katika utukufu wako wa milele usio na mwisho kwa Yesu Kristo bwana wetu Mungu wa rehema nyingi baba bwana wetu Yesu Kristo aliyefufua na uzima ambaye kila mwaminie yeye angepokufa ataishi na kila mwenye kuishi ndani yake na kumwamini hafi milele tena ametufundisha kwa mtume wake mtakatifu Paulo tusiwahuzunikie waliolala katika yeye kama watu wasio na matumaini tukusii kwa unyenyekevu e baba utufufue na sisi toka mauti ya dhambi kwenye uzima wa haki ili tukifariki ndani ya hii tustaheli tustahiri uh, starehe katika yeye kama tunavyo tumainia kwamba huyu ndanda yetu Justin amesarehe na katika ufufuo wa watu wote siku ya mwisho tuwe na kipari machoni pako tupewe baraka ile mwanao wako umpenda atawapa wote wa kupendao na kukucha ukisema jeoni watoto wabarikiwa kwa baba yangu urudhini ufalme mliowekewa tangu kumbo kwa dunia Tuomba utupe hayo Mungu mwenye enzi baba wa rehema kwa Yesu Kristo mpatanishi na mwokozi wetu. Amen. Thank you kufikia hapo tutaomba wale ambao ni wa familia, very close friends wa Paul Aminda wa familia wa Paul Mchanga so that waweze uh, kumwachilia mmoja wao. Waweze kumwachilia Paul Mchanga the uh, nephew and the yeah, family so that they can say kwa heri kwa mpendo wao tukijua kwamba ni kwa heri ya kuonana ya kwamba close family friends family 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 friends please wale ambao ni kirago family first of all the new creation family first of all wacha kutita madhari kila mtu atarusha mchanga the kirago family kwanza we giving them an opportunity so that they can say kwa heri ya kuonana kwa mmoja wao pamoja kirago and the siblings there the watoto kwa pamoja thank you god bless you god bless you mtulie mama aende salama tutakutana na yeye and then i also request um and i mean uh, that is not what you are i request kk and uh, mombi to do the same henry yeah and the uh, and uh, kitty 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 come over Yes na baba yake Osiris Osiris asking Dwight Aha Okay We have ants and and why I'm so thinking because all of us shall come here na saki tu tu nini na wao ants and 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 uncles wa joki and na uncles wa joki and then we'll have the sisters the family of sisters if you are on as the as the sisters come the aunts and the uncles wa kirago the aunts and the uncles wa kirago come forward of 
Okay, sisters. Okay, present sister. Now, if you know you are a senior citizen, if you are 70 plus, come forward. 70, 70 plus, come forward. Na wale ambao tunafanya hivyo tuwapatie wengine nafasi 70 plus Na kwa hao wametimisha miaka ya Mungu eh 70 plus if you are not 70 plus then please ufanye hivyo usirushe mchanga because your time is coming So that the senior citizens 70 years plus thank you thank you yeah, and ukiona mtu wa 70 anakupita tafadhali mpatie nafasi. Yeah, 70 plus, 70 plus. Na ninaangalia tu naona niona kama umefikisha sare zaidi. Yeah, 70 plus. Sasa ninyi mnaweza enda mpumzika pale kwa viti mkimaliza ishuhuri. So that wale ambao they energetic nafasi ya kuendelea. 70 plus they still uh going on. Okay, are they all done? Kuja mazishi ni kufanya kili ambacho tunato kifanya sanji. So I think they are all done. Now all the others can come in. All the others can come in now. And you do the necessary. Waibaji wa kiendelea na nyimbo. Naomba wale ambao wanatoroga Karibio sasa Kati makundi ambao wanatoroga Kifika alusu Kwa kumama kutoroga Kati kwa kubalia wawake Kwa kati ya mbere Kani mkende wa kama uji ya kutu Kwa ya Kwa ya Kwa ya Kwa ya Kwa ya Asira. Oh, my God. 
Santo y a los infieles a que Dios ha hecho.
We're waiting for them to come. Let everybody else come. Experience peace. 
You need to experience long life and old age within the family of our father. We declare, Father, that now, Father, because we declare that we shall be able to see it in our fourth generation, may they be able to see it in their fourth generation, because that is your word, O my Father. We worship you and we praise you. Thank you for the service providers and whoever did everything working of King. We are speaking blessing and favor. I declare officials one. Three, every other spiritual blessing over each and every one of them, Father. We decided to take this day to come and mourn with his family, O Abba, Father. May he also grant them anyone and any help they need, even as they go back to hell, they have come from all dear Lord. Thank you and receive all the glory, even as we retreat back, as we get home safely. All glory and honor shall be unto your holy name. For this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the church says, Amen, amen and Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. That's my the end of our service today. As you get back to your home, uh, go, uh, go on with our blessings. My name is Pastor Andrew Machina from Pastor Baptist Church in Nairobi, West Rus. So if you happen to visit, come and visit with us. Now, if we have the other flowers, we have time to, to do so. Thank you. Thank you, uh, ushers. You can choose the clergy and the immediate family to the tent right behind me up here. If you are not part of the immediate family, right where we have the salmon on the right, we near the party on my right here. is a part for two serving points. One serving point for men, one serving point for family. Kindly don't allow yourself to be removed from the line where the family is living from, 